Hey folks, this episode of the Smoke and Tire podcast is brought to you by Dylan Optics. You know those awesome sunglasses you always see Matt wearing in the videos? Those are Dylan Optics, and they have that matte finish not because they're fogged up, but because Dylan's use a special anti-reflective coating on their glass. They look really cool, but also they work really well. They have a, a special polarization technology, which gives Dylan, um, frankly, the clearest, crystallist, most delicious icy diamond like lenses that I have actually ever seen and uh, they before they were a sponsor I bought a pair because I saw them in a store and started wearing them and was blown away and then uh, and only after that did they become a sponsor so I was a customer first and I was immediately sold on them um, they look cool they come in uh, a bunch of different frame styles both plastic and metal uh, they come in uh, a bunch of different lens colors uh, with the matte finish uh, there's blue there's green there's gold there's silver black and there's red is coming out soon if it's not out yet um, it's they're all really really neat I've had a bunch of different pairs um, they have different frame styles that fit heads big and small so go to the smokingtire.com and click on the partners tab and uh, click on that Dylan optics banner I will give you a free t-shirt uh, smoke entire t-shirt if you buy a pair of Dylan optics using that link and uh, if you have had Dylan optics in the past if you've gotten a set leave a comment uh, let me know how you like them we'd like to hear feedback on that kind of stuff um, the smoke entire podcast is also brought to you by beeline coffee uh, we now have our own smoking tire roast with beeline coffee and it is delicious uh, light roast medium body very very tasty single origin beans um, small batch. It's super delicious. Uh, we've given it out to a bunch of different coffee nerds, and uh, we've we've gotten rave reviews. Now, I, I didn't develop it. Uh, Beeline did. They're very smart. Um, I would just told them what I liked, but they have uh, a lot of different roasts for sale on their site, BeelineCoffee.com. If you use code TST, uh, anything in the store, they've got decaf, they've got espresso beans, they've got uh, uh, a, a variety of delicious uh, brewing coffees. Uh, code TST will get you 15% off anything in the store. Uh, try my roast. It's, uh, it's super delicious. BeelineCoffee.com, code TST. And let's talk about Blue Apron. Blue Apron is the leading meal kit delivery service in the U.S. And while many people know what they do, many don't know about the types of meals you eat when you cook with Blue Apron, like quick bucatini with broccoli and pecorino cheese and Italian-style shrimp and sweet peppers with incredible ingredients and chef-designed recipes. Blue Apron lets you see what the power of food can do. Blue Apron delivers fresh pre pro Portioned ingredients. Hard to say that. Pre portioned ingredients and step by step recipes right to your door that can be cooked in under 45 minutes. The menu changes every week based on what's in season and it's designed by Blue Apron's in house culinary team. Blue Apron offers 12 new recipes each week and customers can pick two, three, or four recipes based on what best fits their schedule. Blue Apron sends out only non-GMO ingredients and meat with no added hormones. For listeners of The Smoking Tire, check me out. $30 off your first order if you visit blueapron.com slash tire. That's blueapron.com slash tire. I'm giving away 30 bucks off your first order at blueapron.com slash tire. Tire. Check out this week's menu. Get your 30 bucks off at blueapron.com slash tire. Blue Apron is a better way to cook. And uh, if you're into watches, check out the Watch and Listen podcast, which I am hosting with my friend Cameron Weiss, the master watchmaker and uh, founder, CEO, head watchmaker of the Weiss Watch Company, uh, which is making watches from scratch right here in Los Angeles, California. Um, Watch and Listen is a show where uh, basically he teaches me everything there is to know about watches. We talk about topics general and very 
very specific and nerdy. It's a video show, youtube.com slash watch and listen podcast, all written out loud. Uh, it's also an audio show available on iTunes, available on all your top Android uh, players, and available at Shout Engine, just like this show, uh, shoutengine.com slash watch and listen. Uh, I'm sorry it's not exactly the same as the YouTube link. Um, watch and listen is the audio. Watch and listen podcast is the video link. It is an optim- It is optimized for video because we have this really cool uh, microscope cam that, uh, that Cameron can get in and point out stuff and take watches apart and really show the insides and how these things work. And I've learned already in just the first 10 episodes like so much about watches and it's really, really cool show. So check that out if you're into watches and a lot of people who are into cars are. And uh, for those of you who aren't, I've taken the watch stuff off the smoking tire, except for this promo. So you're welcome. All right. And now uh, follow us on all the social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, blah, 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 blah. Let's get on with the show. Here it is. It's the Smoking Tire Podcast. Air on the side of Felicio. <laughs> What's happening? This is this is the Smoking Tire Podcast. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. What's happening? Bienvenue. Day one. Back from vacation. Hi. Mm-hmm. Alex Bernstein in the studio. Welcome, sir. What's happening? Hi. I haven't seen you in a minute. It has been longer than a minute, I think. It's been a long minute. It's been a long, long it's minute. It's been a long minute since you've been here, but... We've been, uh, it's good to have you back. Yeah. It's Welcome. Good, it's good to be here. You You're just really, got back too, really right? close to my house. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> super convenient. That's what I said. Larry Chen, I just hung out with him. He shot my car. Oh, on, yeah. He shot it on film uh-huh. for Speed Hunters. Oh, I saw that. The and, Fox uh, button, right? and that's what I said to him. He came to, he came to me. He didn't make me drive up to the east fucking yeah. hills anywhere. You know where he lives? He lives in like. It's far away. He lives in like <laughs> Pomona. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, it's not Pomona, but I it's, forget the name now. Whatever. If you the, didn't say Pomona, I would have known the name. It's not. Pom- I know. It's not Pomona. Like Ontario but he, or whatever. It's, it's, it's like near east. El Monte. I don't it's know. far east. It's but he's never, he's never home. I think he's gone. No, no, he's one of those no. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if but man, if he's got to come to the west side, I was very happy fun. that that he had, he came to Ooh. me. He was but, over here recently towing a car, and he texted me. He's like, "Just saw you rip by me on the fucking ten. Didn't even see me. I guess he was towing his two forty. Oh, where, what? Why didn't he really Oh, he went to. Uh, well, he was just at Thermal doing like a Canon. Oh no, shooting this was like school? a couple of weeks ago. Oh, okay, maybe, maybe do a shop. I don't know what he was doing. Oh man, that car know. is awesome though. That car is awesome. Larry Chen photo on Instagram. One of the best photog other other than Alex. One of the best photographers. <laughs> Larry's dope. He's a good photographer. Yeah, He's Larry's excellent. the best. Yeah. Larry, where, uh, I love you. where have you been? You were just you just got back like last night. I wish right? I was somewhere exotic like you, but uh, I did a shoot for about ten days in San Diego and Palm Springs. Oh, nice. Who for? Yeah, for Toyota. Oh, lovely. That's all I can say. Okay. Mm. Um, <sighs> Secrets. But yeah, that was pretty rad. I'm super exhausted. Yeah, but ten days in a row of straight sh- day rates is nice. Though. <laughs> yeah. You take you take that exhaustion. Ten day rates. I like ten day. It's ten, all good. <laughs> ten x day rates is worth the drive to San Diego. Yeah, I tell you. We don't that. even have to drive. They picked me up in an Escalade. Oh, really? Usually oh, that's it's a suburban. Lovely. I felt like kind of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the photographer. That's what it felt like. I was like, just yeah. put me in the fucking minivan. Yeah, DL. They picked. I call, I got an Uber the other day, mm-hmm. so I got. I wanted to treat. Wanted to treat Hannah. Got an Uber to the airport. It was an Uber Black. I, I was like, yeah, I'll treat it. Kind of, <laughs> six her. miles to the airport. Six really miles. spoiled my girl. Eight minutes. A suburban shows up. I'm like, oh, there's two of us. This is a useful waste of space. <laughs> you know. So we go to the airport. Whatever. Three days later, okay, I get an email from Uber. It's like, we have adjusted your receipt. I'm like, oh, did I get overcharged? No. They went back in, and someone decided that there were not two people in that Uber, that there were, quote, more than four people in that Uber, (laughs) and therefore they assessed me an extra charge of $5 three days later what <laughs> that's so weird does that mean there was video in there no there if there is it will exonerate me <laughs> yeah maybe they had to do the ride before i don't know unless they really thought i was transporting humans in my suitcase which damn they've got me <laughs> i wonder if the, if 
drivers can just add that and they're like, I make an extra five bucks. Three days and later. And people probably don't notice. Yeah, maybe someone doesn't notice, but I... I you know, yeah. At first, at first I stupidly... I, there's no way to dispute it in the email, which I was going through the email is how I found it. Because... If you don't, if you use like a fucking non-email for Uber, like if you use your porno email back from when you needed a porno email for Uber, like you might not got that alert and you might not right. have known right. because like to, I had to go into the app and then go into that ride and to go all the way to the bottom to see it was there. I didn't have like a notification in the app. So this could be some kind of scam that mm -hmm. drivers do. So at first I just saw the email, there's no way to dispute it. It's like motherfuckers, put that shit on Instagram, it's all mad. <laughs> And then I found in the app there's a way to dispute it. Yeah, you dispute yeah, everything. Dude. Yeah. That's a racket. Back immediately. Yeah. Have you disputed successfully credit cards charges before? Like, you yeah. ever do a chargeback? I dispute everything. <laughs> Define everything. <laughs> Just Can anything you tell me disputable. About your, no. Your best uh, credit I mean, card between, dispute story? Between, between Lyft and Uber, I think I have a lot of issues. <laughs> I have issues with them both, like, in terms of, like, you know... Shady business yeah. practices. Yeah, well, that's why I think more, so more is the, the better one, one, though, right? More, I think you, you know. Yeah, I think I think Uber is morally probably the worst. The one. worst one. Yeah, like if you can future lady, right? For the <laughs> <laughs> He's spoiling her with the worst brand. She only in uses Lyft. She uses Lyft. Oh. She won't use Uber. I think Lyft Uber is, is attached now to Delta. Shout out <laughs> Medallion members. Uber is or Lyft is. Lyft is attached to Delta. Yeah. Oh shit. Well, then I'm gonna have to switch to Lyft. Same. Yeah. Are you gold or platinum? Diamond? What are you? <laughs> oh, shit. I know diamonds. Put me on the spot. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Silver? I'm just gold. Gold's straight. Gold, they, you know, gold sounds nice as a metal. It does. Mm -hmm. But and then it allows you the benefits. The benefits are, and the benefits when you get to platinum are pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah. I got. I get uh, four, my sights. four domestic first class upgrades a year oh, on the man. house. It's pretty good. It's nice. I think I'm, I'm gold on United and it's like, you get to board before most people. I'm United, totally fine with yeah, that. United, United though. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. Once they beat the shit out of that guy, I had to. Be, <laughs> I'll I, see you guys. I cashed out my points, and I was like, "I'm out." No more United. No more, man. They're JF, all shitty, though. JF, right. is the they're king all of the United. same, dude. Oh, really? JF is like the George Clooney up in the air character on United. He is like I eight just million think we need miles. A new airline. We we could use they, a new airline. I heard, you know what? Well, so you were talking about statuses, which is my least favorite, most pretentious LA conversation, <laughs> by the way. But next to traffic, yes. Um... But Southwest, if you like, there's like some credit card credit card loophole right now, and you can have unlimited buddy pass, which is good <laughs> if you have to travel with someone. Yeah. But I don't really fly Southwest. I don't. But either. going be between here in New York and here and anywhere, I had people that did this. They're like, oh yeah, both of us went. It was like three hundred bucks for two round yeah, trips. Yeah, because you <laughs> never pay scam. for the other person. That's a good scam. Or I like that they one. give you like one or two buddy passes. Except you got to fly Southwest. Yeah. Mm. They're all right. Hannah flies them back and forth to San Francisco. They're all right. Um. I just fucking flew. You, you, What's your, you your favorite want? credit card reward program? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so real quick though, do you know what Copa Airlines is? No. Is the official airline of Panama? Do you remember Copa? Oh, that, we, <laughs> oh I thought it was going to be like Greek. Sense. Do you remember we Copa flew, it, we flew yeah. it to Panama? I remember we did. I don't know how we got there. Well, we I flew it to the Galapagos because oh, okay. I went through Panama City to Ecuador. And so when we went to Panama a couple years ago, I got a a black mold infection in my in my lungs like I didn't upper know what, respiratory infection yeah, I didn't it know was what you were gonna fucked say. up and when I got to the airport in Panama for the layover that smell I got off the plane and that mold smell mm -hmm. hit me in the face for the airport and I was like I think you freaked out but stuck in this airport for like two hours shit was so grimy yeah <laughs> well, it was moist Sounds there I mean and they have a lot of buildings there that are Unfinished uh, intentionally, it seems like. Oh, I'm just yeah. gonna store some money in this concrete, <laughs> and the and the buildings are covered in like black mold because it's just it's up there. It's, it's rainy. I yeah. learned something interesting about that. Do you know that in South America they don't really uh, do mortgages so much down there? Yeah. So like in Ecuador, in Galapagos, and, and in Guayaquil, where I went through, there's a lot of like half finished buildings, and you're like, well, what the fuck is this going on? And like, why don't they finish this shit? And you'll see buildings where like. The first floor will be like a restaurant or a business or a house, and there'll be just a fully unfinished like rebar concrete. And you go, what the hell is going on? Well, they don't do mortgages. They build and then move in like as they can afford it in real time. So only cash, build with cash. Yeah, with cash. And so oh. you see like all these people <laughs> live in like these concrete bunkers <laughs> looking things. They're like, well, I'll, I'll paint it when I can afford it. Like. That's pretty crazy, That's but it's like, totally crazy. Yeah, build as you go. I mean, I guess and maybe no they don't. Debt. Well, I guess they don't trust the banks or whatever. Yeah. It's part of their culture, apparently. But what's not weird to is like it. if you're a restaurant, you know, you move in, you got your money, <laughs> but above you is nothing. And then no, one and year the, a crane shows up and like 
Yeah, so today the specials are. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, yeah, the, then they leave the the rebar and shit just sticking out of the roof. So you see, it's like, oh, that's a decorative. It's there's decorative. like the bottom half of a whole lot of buildings. <laughs> <at the> top. <laughs> so that's amazing. It's crazy. It's a it's a rescued building. But it's just mm-hmm. a weird. It, it's. I mean, I get the idea of not wanting to owe anyone money. That seems pretty smart, probably. But it takes like. 30 years to build a house. <laughs> it's just yeah, weird that you can own a, you can buy a commercial space and then lease out this part, but this isn't done. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. If Everything it's is very I saw a bunch of that. There was a lot of completely unfinished space above commercial stores and restaurants and stuff like that. Really weird. Like what if what if the second floor was like a like a therapy center for war for war vets? <laughs> yeah. And then the third floor, they start to rebuild, and it's just banging and noise. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's there's a bunch of shell shock going on. It's there. like they really yeah. didn't think through the banking process. It's so weird, but uh, fucking Galop goes cool. We'll get to that later. But uh, what else is going on in the world of cars? You say, did I hear you say when you grow up that you grow up in a new car? What? Did you say you rolled up in a new car? Oh, like not a new car. New to you, me. New, no, you're not your BMW, though. It's a BMW, again. You, not the same 335 no, you had before. No, I sold that. Oh, okay, cool. What do you have yeah. now? So I had a lot of parts on that one. Yeah, a lot. It was like, like 500 horsepower, right? It was Yeah, but fast. I just got really tired of it, and I was doing a lot more track stuff. And I'm like, I need. I miss my E46 M3. I also started missing my Evo. And then um, and I'm like, all right, maybe E92 M3 if I'm not going to do the Z4 M Coupe or uh-huh. Z3 M Coupe, which was like the ultimate goal. But uh, the price the is... Last we M-car. talked about this last time. The last time. M car with a key, man. <laughs> Super Z4 analog the feel Z- it. The camaraderie. Z- anyway, <laughs> so I was like, fuck, what am I going to do here with all these parts? What can I do that could swap over? I really want an E92 M3, but I'm not in the mood to spend 30 grand. Yeah. Long story is that short. What the, rate is, what the going rate is for... For the one I'd want, like I only want white carbon roof, manual okay. cloth seats, like... Mm. Oh, cloth seats? Yeah, that's a, E92. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it wouldn't matter. I'd probably swap them anyway. But. <laughs> all right. Anyway, uh, I'm looking and I'm like, you know, the N54, that three liter mm-hmm. twin turbo six and the 335 was pretty cool and people shit on it a little bit, but it's like so cheap. You make a ton of power. They just generate a lot of heat. I'm yeah. like, what else can I do? So I went to go test drive an E82 135i. Oh, yeah. Which, by the way, secrets out like that is the best bargain you can get right a now. A 135i? The best fucking bargain. Really? Yeah. How how cheap is cheap? Uh I mean everyone who had guessed what I paid for that car they were like 20 25 yeah. it's a 09 uh-huh. 60,000 miles on it one yeah. owner 16. Yeah. white yeah uh <laughs> 12 grand. Fuck, wow. really? Needed Man. nothing. What? Yeah. There goes my resale. Yeah. But uh yeah, no, Great. sickest, sickest car, perfect. rear wheel drive, sub 3,000 pounds, so I'm like, I'm going to do what I did with the Is E90. It sub 3,000 pounds? No, easy to get there, sorry. Well, how do you get there? What do you take out? Uh, take front seats are out. 60 pounds each, oh, okay. my pole positions are 15 each, the rear bench and rear seat is, is like another driver? seven. I don't really have to go anywhere daily. And now my true. chick takes the train, so I also randomly gained an accurate TSX. Oh, oh, okay. It's lovely. Yeah. Daytime daytime daily driver. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, get those seats the fuck out of there. No, everything's out. It's <laughs> oh, all is done. it already out? Yeah, no, I built it in like a month because <laughs> so a super lap battle was coming up with Global Time Attack and Vinny from Hoonigan, my yeah. uh, close buddy, and Brandon were all like, let's go run a pro super lap battle like time attack event even though none of us have driven button willow <laughs> or been in time attack cool how'd it go it went awesome yeah time, so, the good news about time attack is it's like kind of one at a time so you watch a couple I actually other really like the format <laughs> um and it's good if you didn't also upgrade your oil cooler yet because you know temp start to rise you're like i already did my hot lap We're that's good. true yeah you got to do one one really banger yeah so button was fun too huh button will is so sick it's a fun everyone, track everyone told me about that and i'm like you know you hear two minutes like that barrier and everyone's like yeah did I'm you like, run under twos I ran a two flat over and over and over again. Great. So it's a fast car. Yeah, it was it's a fast car. What, so, yeah. what did you put on the car? What tell the people? Uh, so basically, yeah, it started up on stock. Um, I did all the suspension basically. Every single arm has been replaced. So uh, rear tone camber arms from Beamer Worlds, front lower control arms from an M3. Then there's some like hybrid stuff on there. Um, it's uh, KW Club Sport dampers with Swiss springs and four shoulder camber plates and. I clearanced out a lot of things uh, and did a lot of measuring because the biggest thing with this car is it's still not super light. They're super fast. They understeer a lot, and they have no room in the fenders, the non-M versions. Yeah. So everyone on the forums, <clears throat> just the best source of information. Um, the forums, bro. What's everyone's like, everyone's like, yeah, you could do two 225s up front and like 255 out back. That's the max. I was Whoa. like, you guys are fucking, there's no way. So What is this, time, what is this stock size? 
I think it's like 205, 225. Oh or my something. god! No, really? it's really well, maybe that's the 128. <laughs> They're really small, it's and small. the offsets are crazy. So because all the room on the rear is inboard, and the room up front is just non-existent. Okay. Hmm. So I had to run a specific diameter strut with specific diameter springs at a specific height and spring length, so that the perch is above the front tire. And then I pulled out the front fenders a little bit, not too much. But right now I have an 18 by 9 up front with 265s. Whoa. 265s? <laughs> wow. It's, it's not that comfortable. Does it and rub? Then, uh, this, this setup rubs a little bit now. I had like 255s on last. Like it rubs on, on bumps last. or it rubs on lock? No, it rubs on bumps. Uh, so I'm just going to do a front. We're, that's later. Mm -hmm. um, Can you put hydro, like airlift in the front? There's no room for anything that's, on the coilover. Really? Just, no. Cut the fenders. Yeah. You do whatever. So yeah. it'll be fine. That'd I be just cool. I heated makes, them up and pulled them. Who makes uh, the wide body fenders? There's no, that's the biggest issue there is no good looking wide body kit no. they're all shit and there's one company that makes like these upgraded rear fenders and you can take some parts from the m parts bin but that's like it's like five grand alone in parts and you have to cut the rear quarters off to like put those proper yeah. rear fenders on you're talking like 15 grand <laughs> easy which more than the car yeah i remember my when marco's car I drove yeah, that, that car yeah i mean if you it if you add it up, it's like, oh my god! Dude, that's, I mean, it's like the singer of the one series. Yeah, yeah that, that car is like yeah, they, they built like one hundred fifty thousand dollars. They yeah. built the street car version of that yeah. too, right? Did it? It did not sell on Bring a Trailer. Did it not? Did it sell? I don't know. I didn't. I, I didn't bother looking. It'd be so cool if you so, could if you could really design hot. a fender and then someone could like three D print it. I mean, so I know I'm the people on, there. That'd be rad. That's what I'm working on right now, actually. Three D um, printing fenders. I'm working on designing my own body kit for the car. Because uh, I was really inspired by the M235i racing. Uh huh. So where the, you have the, like you have the 235 streetcar, then you have the M2, which is super rad. Need to spend M2 on is it. Nice, nice car. Yeah. But then you have the M235iR, which is like they run it in race series mm -hmm. in Germany, and it's a factory designed wide body flare kit uh, with no exposed rivets. Ooh, it's nice. Super sick. So I'm like, why don't we build the kit that didn't come here? And why don't we do like the 135i racing, which will mm. be the marriage like between that. the dudes who like didn't want to spend 60 grand on a 1M, but didn't want to leave, you know, within the stock constraints of the 1M. Well, you, well, you Timmy, have to then... Timmy's got this picture. That's a nice picture. There's uh, what's Turner who's, has the, one. who's the dude who races this thing in uh, in AER? I don't know. Fuck, I can't. He's going to kill me. I can't remember. Well, you have to name. change all your suspension Tony? parts, though, it's because Tony. now you're going to have more room. Are you going to have to, like. No, I'm no? Just, I just. I can just run normal tires and wheels. Like Sweet. I, That's I, nice my goal is an 18 by 10 plus 25 with 285s or 295 squared. Whoa. 295 squared? Yeah. Yeah. That'd, that'd be, be awesome. awesome. That's what that's yeah. what my Mustang has. It's a lot so of So right grip. now, yeah, the cars, I basically. I did everything except for replacing the turbos again because you really don't need to. And it just doesn't seem like I need to do that right now. <laughs> the car makes so much power. How but, much uh, power? Wait, yeah. So you did all, you didn't even say the engine shit yet. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, engine wise, it's just all the bolt ons. I upgraded the inlets, uh, intercooler. It's a Burke race exhaust, which literally weighs like twenty pounds. It's Oof. two straight down pipes, two long resonators, and no muffler. Is um, it made of God. anything special, or it's just light because it doesn't have? It's just light and beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I don't know the exact anything. material, but it's it's really like it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Is um, it is it like an ink canal or some crazy it thing, just, or is it, it like golds and changes <laughs> color really well? It sounds like ti cool, titanium man. does but that. It's definitely not titanium. It's not. No, I don't know. We can look it up. Burke, What's it called? Hit us up. Burke Technology. Burke Technology exhaust. Let's find yeah, it. Race too. exhaust. He'll find it. B u r k e. B e r k. Oh, b e r k. Um. That so so it's making five how much five hundred now? So yeah, it's just on the ninety one tune. It makes three ninety wheel and four fifty torque. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I haven't done the eighty five tune yet, but I just upgraded the fuel pump, the lines, and put an ethanol content analyzer in there because now we can run flex fuel from uh, Motive Motorsport, who does all my tuning. So sick! Wow, man. So um, three ninety is ninety one octane, and what is it on? Yeah, so on, on the eighty five, it'll probably make around like four fifty wheel, five hundred torque. Which That's I honestly, so so the thing is, is like those those stock turbos are built for efficiency and mm -hmm. torque low down. Mm -hmm. Not a good racing setup. Um, so what I'm going to do with Motive is kind of turn in the boost curve to really linear to make the car a little more predictable with the stock turbos. With the stock turbos, yeah, yeah. And otherwise, I've like upgraded stuff that impeded flow because they used to just build a ton of boost at like 2,000 RPM. And then, like by five thousand, you're like, yeah, they kind of die. Should just shift. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so I think if I kind of taper the boost curve all the way to the right, and uh, with the upgraded inlets I did, they breathe a little better. You hold boost to redline, 
Cool. A this, is, this is serious, man. It's I'm very. I like nerd out a lot of I thought he was trying this. to fucking simplify shit with the new car. I didn't realize like I went way crazier. I don't know why I did it. <laughs> Honestly, me and Vinny were like we super amateur track dudes, but we've built so many dumb cars, and I've built cars that were like rad and like kind of not focused though. So this one, I'm like, I really like Time Attack. I really like road racing. I want to do that way more. Time Attack is you can fun. build a track car. And I've enjoyed so. the, the, the bullshit non-Time Attack. So I like the grid yeah. life Time Attack. So mm -hmm. I do the announcing from the Time Attack. It's fun. It's just fun having a track car that you could put yeah. a license plate on. So I think who that's, else? That's what the other goal. kind of cars were down at, at that battle at uh, Buttonwell? Um, there's everything. There's a lot of Hondas, a lot of S2000s. It's all S2000s, right? The Evos are so fucking fast. I forget the name of the the uh, shop, but. Their car was insane. Was there's like, uh, like a 42. I just R, love the scaffolding. 38 stuff they pounds put on. of boost. It's, you know, yeah, they're amazing. so amazing. So Some crazy. of the ones at, at Grid Life are nuts too. There's a guy who runs STI on air suspension. Actually, mm -hmm. it's a crazy fast, and it's when they work when they're working right. They're yeah. like, Woo! Mm -hmm. but they all have one lap in them. Like I don't really. <laughs> I'm not building my car to have one lap. I mean, I'm designing my own oil cooler kit so I can hold that together. I put a CSF radiator in. Intercooler I have is like for a thousand horsepower. <laughs> uh, it weighs thirty six pounds. Oh my god! Intercooler? It's, yeah, it's, it's more than your seats. <laughs> the stock intercooler, just by chance, it has like plastic end tanks. Yeah, it's awful. Yeah, weighs this six all... pounds. So I literally added thirty pounds over my front wheels now. But uh, the car actually, the inlet air temperature actually decreases when I when I'm you go when now. you go fast. Yeah, <laughs> it's insane because I used to have a thirty is degree that... rise. I log all this shit. Is I it, just, like, is it there. good to have it decrease when you hit the gas? Mm -hmm. Is it good to have it like it decreases? Well, you just want like, you want the coldest, densest air possible, especially for forced induction. But uh, usually, you could say that. Can you overcool it to the point where it's a problem? I don't. I, I don't. You'd be really skilled, I guess, if you just sprayed uh, nitrous all over your intercooler. Yeah, I and it. made it frozen. But <laughs> I, I don't, think I don't I actually we, know. I, I think mean, we shot a car with Musto once that had so much cooling it was not getting up to temp. Well, there's that. Oh, that. Well, my like car. That. Yeah, yeah my car yours, had a problem. Yeah, my car so had this different. problem. Hilarious. We turned. It turned out that uh, the thermostat. Yeah. Was like stuck open. Uh -huh. And so, like, it would just... Radiator or uh, oil cooler? Uh, radiator. Mm -hmm. And so it would just flow from the time you turn the key until the time you yeah, turn it off, terrible. it was flowing. And so it would never get above, like, 160 degrees. And we're like, oh, this is not not good. Uh, <laughs> cool. What the fuck? We fixed it, though. Yeah. I mean, intercooler won't do that, so you'll but be But have you ever okay. seen, like, someone's intercooler, someone with, like, ice on it? That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah they go nuts. <laughs> it's always the dudes at the European Card Grand Prix. Like. Yeah. <laughs> The Gatabill the Gata Bill guys. Where'd yeah. you cut your teeth to learn all like login stuff and suspension measurements? Like that's far beyond where I'm at right um, now. Which I think one, it depends on the car. You know, some of these cars, like you look at like the STIs, the Evos, uh, a lot of the turbo cars have such crazy aftermarket followings and um and it's just yeah, just sitting and being obsessed with this stuff. But where I was going with the turbo engines is they're so easy to extract power from. Yeah. Uh, it got me super into like, oh, I'm going to get a tune from so-and-so or go to the dyno here or put a boost controller on, whatever. It was just so easy to see gains that it, it turned me into someone who I was always pushing the limits of these engines. And that just taught me way too much mm -hmm. about stuff I don't use on a day to day. <laughs> but they <laughs> but keep working. No, right? but it's, yeah. Yeah. But no it's, it's, and it's awesome. And I mean, I am like, I am like sickly obsessed with this stuff, but not to the point like I hate going to car shows. I'm just, I, understand I don't do that. any of that. I just want to build a car. Uh, awesome. Just go really fast. Valuable skill too. Yeah, absolutely. So, did you cool. hear they just ended Trankus? Speaking they of did? car wash, they a car oh, yeah, shows they killed it. And yeah. I, you know, and then I was like, I'm bummed. I'm not a car show guy because I never even made it out. And I've I lived went, here for five years. I went to a, well, it was the Trankus one only lasted like six months. It was yeah. like once a month for six I months. Done any, it was done. Honestly, I don't think I've ever even been to a Cars and Coffee. You're not really missing that much. Yeah, I liked I like Trankus because it was at the bottom of the canyons. And it was on PCH. And so from Venice, I can have that nice 5 a.m. blast up PCH, yeah. which is which is basically as good as life gets. You know, sunrise coming up, uh -huh. little bit of fog, PCH all to yourself. And in the last couple months, everybody would be... So the only cars on the road would be like, you'd be like, me, XKE, old 911, some guy's crazy race car, here's a GT350, and yeah, it, was awesome. it would be like driving in like Forza, like there's only there's only point, like yeah. fantasy cars around. Solid so that was fun, yeah, sponsor. And then, uh, and then the canyons were there. If the canyons aren't there, it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why uh, did they cancel it? There's just too many people? Neighbors, neighbors complaining. Hmm. Neighbors complaining. Always. Noisy. Yeah. What's your road over there? 
you know the road out. up there. Oh no, it's Malibu. It's fine. Uh, I would go right out of there, and then I would go up Encinal, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then basically I would reverse run Mulholland, which yep. I actually found to be more enjoyable than the standard. I always end up on Latigo. Yeah, Latigo down. Latigo's Latigo's Latigo damn. down. Yeah, especially in a one series in the smaller yeah. car. Yeah. Well, that's where it really Your started. One we were going is a like lot of car every, for Latigo. Yeah. We were going like every Sunday morning, and I'm like, man, grip is so fucking fun. So, mm-hmm. but then you get really like sensitive to understeer, and that's why I always end up putting huge tires up. Well, that car, that road is all downhill, sharp, you know, like Titans going breaking. Going you go up, from the snake. I usually run that road downhill, and the uh-huh. main reason I do is because of the cyclists. Uh, I don't want to be going up that road at 80 miles an hour and be closing on a cyclist yeah. that's going two. Whereas a cyclist, some days go, are heavier than others. Yeah. It, have downhill, like you have, be, you have better roads. luck, and the guy. If you catch a cyclist, they're going pretty quick. So I like but the difference is, though in LA, like the people who live, you know, closer to ACH, and yeah. then don't do the Malibu stuff, and vice versa. If I really want to drive, if I, if I'm if Sundays are, are social Sundays, mm-hmm. so I'll have a cruise. But if you really want to drive, you thanks have to go invite. in the forest. What? It's <laughs> a thanks for the invite. Fuck off! It's not you. I don't, I don't invite. I know, it's like okay. five o'clock in the morning. Yeah, please. I won't be up. Come up. You want to get up at five? Come get up. At five. I've done it once. I'll, I'll be there at exactly eight. Exactly it. Yeah. I I get up with the sun and it's fucked up and there's no way around it. So I'm it, I'm perfectly suited mm-hmm. to an event like that. Cause I'm, I need something to do at five a.m. anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, AC a- a- Angeles Forest is better for driving. You know, do you know that? It's you know, better. You, I think it's just way 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 faster and like yeah. way more sweepers. But I like the kind True. of tight technical stuff, especially uphill and just like second gear fighting for traction the whole mm-hmm. time is a lot mm-hmm. more fun. Just feeling that little, t- just a little bit, a mm-hmm. little bit. And, and you like, been oh, speaking can... of, yeah, I see you like drifting around your E46. Well, I've gone twice. I need to go again. Yeah, but he's, go getting, he's getting good. The kid can drive. Got to get a hydro handbrake in there. I want one so bad, dude. ASD makes one uh, that you can actually put in your stock location. Super sick. Really? Yeah. Really. I mean, you don't even have to have, have get to, remote caliper you don't have to if you cut things. You don't have to cut anything. It's uh, a bolt in. I mean, you have to run some lines, but yeah, of course, you can do it in a factory location. So it's like a standard like pull up, and you don't need like some you know. Oh, I mean, this, it, lo- it looks kind of like the stock one you too. You could put a grip on it if you wanted to, but yeah, it's the shape of the stock one. It's like a oh, down cool. So I loved oh. uh, Chelsea. <coughs> did, Chelsea didn't know if that that's exhaust? actually kind of the shape of the handbrake. <laughs> <laughs> do you did watch you Chelsea Denofa's videos? Yeah. He's just like it's like a handbrake extension. It's yeah. like it's a pipe shoved on, the, or or it's like a new actual rod, but it just kind of like angles up uh-huh. toward like your stereo. <laughs> it's it's like a reaching wand. That's amazing. He doesn't like the vertical one. He likes a good. A no, hydraulic? no. He, his series was like if you have like no money, oh. you know, you can put this on. And it will, it's the same, you're still using like the regular e-brake, but it's just the mechanism is easier for your body. Oh, just the, better the leverage. Because the hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lift Especially a suitcase. in a fixed back. Yeah. yeah. got nothing. Yeah, if you're close. You're, yeah. I never had that problem because I'm always way far away. <laughs> I'm in the back seat. Yeah. Oh, e-brake. Everything is a good, is a reach. No, no, it's yeah. like, it's like sitting in the, in the airplane and saying, just hold your carry on and yeah, now lift yeah. it, you know, constantly. <clears throat> yeah, that's awkward. I don't know. I, I want to get better with just weight transfer and mm-hmm. braking first until I get to like, I don't want to rely on the handbrake, I guess, because yeah, yeah. if you get in like a press car or something else, then you don't, you might not have that. I'm not good with the handbrake stuff because I think it comes from road racing and we're all used to like power on oversteer mm-hmm. yeah. <clears throat> and not necessarily like initiating because I initiate when I've gone too far yeah. and then you have to hold it together. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm actually, I'm pretty mm-hmm. natural with handbrake. Yeah. I'm good on the handbrake and that's not my issue. My issue is the fear of having to write a check in a borrowed car yeah yeah, yeah so well, i'm always, always in my the fear is of the, of the high speed commitment in like some dudes you know yeah. home built drift car which well, is tough to get over is, high speed thing is nuts totally high speed nuts, is, man high speed slides are hard like i you, have i have a lot of moments at button wheel <laughs> actually but so i've been out there twice now chasing this one i just want to get sub two because basically everyone told me i would never run two minute on my first time so I went out and it's I was very, like, I, mean, two I did a two, first time is very good. 212 on my practice lap, then I did 207, 205, 203, and then I ran two minutes the whole second day, but within like, it was two minutes point three. You were so running like the, so the 13, 13A 13, configuration, yeah. yeah. Uh, clockwise, right? Yeah, yeah clockwise yeah. with bus stop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's such a fun track. So fun. Mm-hmm. It's a shitty place to make videos. I hated, <laughs> yeah. I hated Button Willow because it's the worst place to film. Every California track sucks to make yeah. videos at. SoCal track. Chuck but, Wall, uh, I haven't made a video there. Chuck Wall is the best of I them. Loved, I just love that bank turn. With yeah, like the it's the prettiest to there. shoot. But There's it's just the, nothing uh, there, which is why it's pretty. It's almost like a blank yeah. canvas where Button Willow is like, you have, the, you have the haze in the air from like the farming industry. Like yeah, I only did, it's very much yeah. in the air there. I only did Chuck Walla once uh, for a shoot a while ago. It's a fun and track. I went, off, I like went off at 90 miles an hour in my M3 with no. Naoshi Hara sitting <laughs> shotgun. <laughs> did he get out and just walk back to the pit? No, he was laughing harder than I was. Because we were doing a, it was like a shootout for European car. I was shooting that and it was like an IND car and another one. They were like both like signal green or something. Yeah. 
So Die was there with Falcon driving them, getting sideways everywhere. And he's like, oh, let me drive your car. And I think my E46 was like supercharged then and like fully built, big brakes, everything. Uh, and so he drove it. He's like, oh, I like this one way better. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, have fun, dude. He's like, yeah, this is way more fun. He's drifting everywhere. He's like, okay, your turn. I was like, die. Honestly, man, I'm a grip dude. Like I can do second gear on my way to El Segundo always. Like that's it. And then I floor it and I'm off. He's like, no, 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 you got it. <laughs> I'm like, all right, so we're going. I like step it out in second gear one turn, step it out at third for a second. He's like, oh, you're good. Okay, this one. So we like enter it at like 70. Ooh. And I'm like, third gear. Wheel to the left, all good, tap the gas, rear end comes out, and I'm like, this is so fucking easy. <laughs> you say he's he's laughing, I mean, in my head. I was wondering, okay. He's laughing his ass off, and I'm like pedaling through it, counter steering, I'm like, we're good. This is fucking, this is nice. <laughs> and I go, and the, it straightens out, and I, I'm having so much fun, I just let go of the wheel, because I'm like, oh, we'll go back to center, just fucking. <laughs> 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 and, and at that moment, I totally understood why you gotta walk it back. Um, yeah, so we went from sideways to the left, sideways to the right, Huge spin, but throughout that turn, in order to hold it, I was accelerating, like in like yeah. track fashion. Like I wasn't like holding it and staying still. I was like, so we exited at ninety, went into like I don't know five forty, ten eighty, whatever, right into the dirt, and I'm just like, there's just rocks all inside the car. Did we you were, crash the car. We were fine. Right? The car was fine. There was a ton of runoff over there, and I was like, dude, <laughs> it was a lot of runoff. But I remember we went to Button Willow. This was years ago. That was a Chuck Wall. I said right. Oh yeah. no, I know. Yeah. And um. It was the morning and it was like pretty early, like one session had been out and I remember a brand new like baby blue M3 was getting dragged off and oh, it rolled yeah. because it had slid coming onto the straight yep. and the dirt's oh. there, you know, like so there's a lot of runoff, I did that. but it caught. Yeah. I did that when that's I was there, but I didn't, I, I just held it. I think it's in the end of my like two minute video. Oh but yeah? I, Cause that last turn is pretty hard and you, there's, I think as someone who's not seasoned, it's easy to psych yourself out about shit, especially when you're like, so fucking focused yeah. uh, but it's that last turn and it's it's a weird one because it's so flat you can see so far beyond it uh -huh. so it's really kind of natural to just be like I'm gonna turn in a little early uh, and then I just understeered and I made it out to that outside curb on the straight uh, right back on the throttle I'm like well fuck it this is the lap so I got on I think my right right tire like popped off for a second. I just like straightened up and went on. But I, luck, it's sketchy there because they're like sketchy. if you correct there, then you're into the wall. Yeah. yeah like, man. So for those who don't know, it's a ninety degree off. left hand corner. It's yeah. on camber, and, but it's mostly flat. And and if you if you go wide, which does happen, and you can't hold it straight, you tend to loop it into the yeah. inside wall, and it's a very bad crash. Yeah. A lot of sketchy, that, that a lot of little hurt. sketchy sections there. Yeah. Yeah, but, but it's, it's, it's a really and fun I'm at, track. I'm at like yeah. 120 miles an hour, top of four. It's like <clears throat> multiple times. Yeah, it's just, and it's not super abusive on your car that track either. It's it's not, is it? Every time I leave there, I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you have the Acura now. Yeah, like you it. are a you know, thanks, Sherry, <laughs> the BMW owner, of course. I, also I, I have totally an 89 understand. Wrangler that doesn't work anymore. But oh, that was oh, pretty man. cool. Aww. Yeah, that, that, that square headlights are coming back. They're moving into. Should I keep it? No. It was my uncle's. <laughs> he lives in Van Nuys. He oh. called me one day. He's like, I know you always wanted one of these when you used to come visit from New York. It's just sitting here. People leave notes on it. Just take it. And uh, in my head, I'm thinking like tan on tan Sahara edition, like yeah. the dopest Wrangler. I get there. It's like old red pink. Oh, no clear the coat. Faded the red. tires oh. are melted to his driveway. It had been sitting for 13 years oh. with 199,000 miles on it. Yeah. People are right. leaving notes And then I found the old underwear in it, like chick's underwear. And he looks at me. He's like, oh yeah, it must've been your cousin Colin. <laughs> Terrible. I'm like, I'll take it. So I call AAA. <laughs> I still have and to you're do some still money. sitting on this thing? I still have. Well, I got it running with hand oh, yeah. tools. The motor turned over. I poured some fucking Marvel Mystery in there. I put a carb on it from like a Ford Bronco on eBay. Nice. Super easy. Uh, yeah. I got some like else. cheap, awful, awful, awful lift kit from uh, shout out to Rugged Ridge on Amazon. <laughs> Well, the absolute awful. worst. Is that a, that's a really backhanded That's a backhanded plug. shout out. I think you, you bought it from Maybe them. Maybe they'll so give me right. my money back now. Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> that thing fucking rides terribly. But, um, yeah, and like the front end is like not an even lift. It's oh, like a little sad. Oh, no. Damn. But it's great. It, so I enjoyed it for like a summer when hiking, put the dog in it. 
I sold the hard top off it for 600 bucks. There so you I go. Made it. I made out okay. Yeah. Does it have a soft top on it now? No, it has nothing. Nothing. Just nothing. <laughs> yeah. And I ripped the carpet out, so it's completely raw inside, Sweet. too. Perfect. It's a great car. But then it broke down on the 405 <laughs> and kind of caught on fire. And <laughs> yeah, it's LS, just been sitting. LS swap? Maybe. Or like a Cummins or Does something. Does everything else cool. work? I don't know, man. I haven't looked into it because that's how much I don't care about this project anymore. Give it away. Yeah. Just give the car to someone. Yeah, I would give it to away. someone. Yeah. Because you, yeah. can, you can buy a Jeep for like four grand that's probably in better shape than that one. Yeah. yeah. Real I think I'm going to buy, I'm gonna buy a like a daily, I need like a daily, hunt out I need like a daily like chill, like photo adventure snowboarding vehicle. You should send him. Yeah. A, for, Tim, Tim sent me this forerunner. I want a forerunner. Tim's a forerunner so guy. so clean and yeah. I don't have the money for it, but it was it was red. It, it, so many detailed photos. Interior was like pristine. What year was that thing, Timmy? Like yours? No, it was the second gen, maybe ninety two oh, okay. oh, yeah. or something. Yeah, it was really nice. I'm also kind of interested in the new, like I think it's a WK two uh, Grand Cherokee. The newest was it the newest it's one? It's like the new body style. Yeah, those also have really shitty resale. You can get an Overland mm. with the V8 for uh-huh. like under fifteen grand. Oh, oh nice really? Car. Yeah. We had full that's nav what, everything, and they have like I would do that with like nice really tires, nice. little lift. Yeah, those are nice. Done, really nice car. Those yeah. are. Wow. Those, I'm a I big think that's fan what I'm of those. Do, honestly. Yeah, yeah. kind of sold on it, and there's not a lot of them out there. And Forerunners are cool, but someone we know got a uh, a one of those Grand Cherokee diesels. Yeah, and it got lemoned, <laughs> and uh, the dealer got got to keep their business. Got them in like a gas powered one. Mm-hmm. And gave them a lifetime un- unlimited mile warranty. Wow. And so now, like, the guy, like, passed it on to his kid. <laughs> you know, they're on, like, a... They're, regretting this he said, one. He said, they, lifetime. No, he said Jeep calls them a lot to offer to buy it back. Yeah. They, wow. Like, <laughs> this is costing they, us so they much They offer money. them significant money. They want someone that car back. Fired. Yeah. They um, do not want yeah. someone having that We didn't money. expect them to really Dude, take us up well, my, my friend, my friend Misha, who was on the show, he bought a Dodge Caliber. And he happened to get it when they're giving out like unlimited warranty, same warranty, and they also offer him money for it back because they're like, "This is going to cost us money in the long term." And he's yeah. like, "You're never getting this car. <laughs> You're, they're going to take care of it forever." It's like it's not great, but he doesn't give a yeah. shit. Yeah, Transition free is blue, free. motor blue, free shocks are out. Totally. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. I'll see. I'll see. In, I'll see you in 2028. <laughs> yeah. Free is uh, fucking free, man. It's hilarious. I wonder um, if it's uh, is it if it, it can't be transferable. It's not no. There's got to be. I mean, <laughs> I don't not. know. Although offering that up, I'm sure that guy forgot the line item and the asterisk too. Everyone comes in. Well, my grandma. <laughs> no, no, you got to keep that. Her um, Comanche's acting up. <laughs> <Comanche>. <laughs> Did you see uh, that Jeep Musto got? He got a Grand Wag Grand Wagoneer. He showed me when I was yeah, uh, nice. up there. It was really nice. Good color. Yeah, really cool color. I popped in to see hi to him. You know my Musto? He's a man. No. Muscle car dude. You see his Santa beard? Yes. <laughs> Oh, he's got the biggest wait, fucking wait. Santa beard. Let me show you this <laughs> photo. So beast. Um, You're it really, it this. really like it almost scared me. <laughs> so, did you see the photo he put up recently? Where was he on Instagram? Uh, fuck, who was he with? Doesn't matter. So I saw that photo, and you I want- sent it, and I found this. Oh wow! It's the same beard. Oh my god, he does. He looks just like David Cross, and so, he has the same shirt. I don't know if, if Alex we, is going to understand because he doesn't know. We Musto, have pull up but Musto's Instagram. Uh, it's just uh, Mike Musto. What, what is it? I think it's hold like it up, hold it up to the camera. Oh, that's right. It's like Musto forty four. <laughs> oh, Zach, clumsy. <laughs> don't, don't, David, don't, don't, David okay, Cross. So put this in your brain, everybody. <laughs> and then we got to go to Musto's Instagram. Just search for Mike Musto. Um, search for Mike Musto Instagram. Yeah, um, <laughs> he does look just there fucking. There he is. Uh, go down. The beard. What is he embarrassed? He deleted he the whole do, thing. He just deleted no, it. Someone else took it. There it is. Okay, there's the beard. <laughs> <laughs> he owns. He owns I know that shirt. Though. What is? I don't know who that girl crazy is. Crazy coloring in there. <laughs> He's like racing stripes. Yeah. It's like it's a Camaro kinda, hood. Well, I've sort of developed this as well. I've got like a white thing happening in Are the middle. I guess mine's starting, but it's going to be Are reversed because I got just a little gray over yeah. here. Yeah, Welcome to the well, if it's going to be all color and then just gray stripes, that'd Welcome be cool. Welcome to the world <laughs> of like best weird fucking facial hair. But his muscles is shockingly uniform. There's his Wagoneer. I'm kind of oh, jealous of this nice. Wagoneer. And it's very, very fresh. He had really uh, nice. he had it completely restored. It's really nice, and it's a ninety. The la- it's like the last the last two years of those things are he restored it good. or uh, shop. He had a guy. He had a guy. Had a guy. I always wonder about that. Like it's just something I feel like regular car people don't imagine, like dropping a car somewhere and like what what's entailed and being like, well, must looks like, like shit now. Let's restore it. He, yeah, he, well, he I can't imagine everything. Yeah, he did when he built his Charger. I think. In his Daytona, like he did a lot of mm-hmm. the work and like a lot of the troubleshooting on the engine stuff. But I think he's just at a point where 
he wants someone else to do it right. And yeah, he no, I'm, time, I'm like, all for yeah. it. it must yeah. be, I'm just saying it must be awesome to just like drop it off and show up. That's what uh, I'm doing with this, my 9-11. Amazing. Yeah? Yeah. I dropped it off and I'll see you in August. That's I awesome. I'm, great. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I mean. Do you want updates? Will it be done in August? Yeah. Okay. It's good enough. <laughs> see you then. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um. Oh man, are right, you want to see you want to see some fucking crazy wildlife Nat Geo shit? Yes. All right. So I went to the Galapagos and I brought back here's a photo album. Sorry, audio people. I'll do my best to describe what is happening in these photos. We should all take turns describing. You want to go? <laughs> no, yeah. That's fine. So so there's a boat. This is a boat. This is the boat. We, this is the boat we were on. This is called the Evolution. It's a 200 foot yacht that was built in 1971 as a Japanese. Uh, quote fishing training vessel wink wink and I say wink wink because it was built as a whaling ship oh, man. <laughs> and it's a steel hull uh, one engine one rudder uh, caterpillar 1300 horsepower cruising speed 10 knots <laughs> but uh, it's actually pretty luxurious it looks kind of traditional but they refitted the inside and so it's like 30 people on the boat is the back of it so we're looking at a profile photo and the back yes. looks angled up like a wing when you walk up there does it feel uphill uh it's slightly hill no I mean, it looks like a no five the, degree the slope yeah it's a there's a there's a slight angle yes there is a slight okay. angle the japanese build these boats with these fucking angles and the floor ends up being that angle <laughs> That's, yeah yes there is an angle so you're on this boat for a week a day i was on this boat for eight days eight days yeah Sweet. and my cabin is the door on the top level on the left there the wood the wooden door that was mine um so we cruise around so the galapagos islands is like 13 islands imagine hawaii if there were never people at hawaii just empty empty so there's like a couple little towns little, like version the size of, of catalina little little towns and there's like a couple of those and 97 percent of the rest of the place is national park protected no people awesome so it's cool because it's completely pure and the wildlife that is there has never um had a problem with people so you can get real close to everything. They don't give a shit. You like, can just catch them for food, no problem. <laughs> yeah, you can eat everything. You don't need a spear or anything. And uh, the, the bad news is because it's so heavily protected, you can't go anywhere or do anything without a naturalist with you, mm. a certified one. Okay. So there's like no boats. There's not. There's only a couple people that can like do shit there. Um, and so you can't even go just like sit on one of the beaches by yourself, like without a naturalist. Whoa. Like, you can't go Sounds on intense. the island without a naturalist and like the boat i was on like that boat like it has a tour group every week but you can't go to the same harbor more than once every 15 days so like they have to alter their schedules and shit so they don't go to the same like it's very restrictive there yeah to keep like the wildlife you know on well, that sounds with. awesome then it's it is awesome. There's so like we here, fucked Tim, up the Great Barrier up, Reef. So yeah, we we could we ruined the Caribbean and the Great yeah, Barrier Reef. Like, let's not ruin this. That's a blue footed booby, a pair of blue footed. Bo their feet are super blue. <laughs> <laughs> there's also red footed boobies and Nazca boobies. Whoa, which booby is that? There's there are. <laughs> there, I have a few crab red pictures. There these are unretouched. I haven't done anything with this. Wow, these the brilliant the, red. The crabs, dude. They the crabs are like, like. Acid trip, electric, <laughs> fucking Kool Aid acid colored. I wait. Do you see some of these other crabs? I mean, like that's very bright. There's there's a sea turtle. There's huge sea turtles, like the size of like Whoa. manhole covers and band bigger, swimming around. We swam with them. It was awesome. They're very graceful. <laughs> huge. Uh, there's like Komodo? A it's a iguanas. Oh, it's a, wow. They have these iguanas like. There are a fuckload of them. <laughs> there are a bunch of different size colors. Are they aggressive, or they just no, keep them very extremely chill. Dude, iguana, it, what, iguana teeth are no joke. I mean, really, that, that thing yeah. looks mad, even though it's it's not. But it's just the way it's staring at you. W weren't those the iguanas that were featured in what was it Planet Earth when it's like oh, running, they're running from the snakes? From the snakes? Yeah, that yeah, yeah. yeah, that's Galapagos. It looks similar Dude, color. That yeah, that's Galapagos. This, I think it's called the Santa Fe iguana. That's a very good, well edited, insane thing. camera work. Yeah, very, that yeah. that video is Galapagos. So how big is this guy? That thing is probably like two and a half feet, three feet. It's pretty big. That's on the bigger end. They start like most of them are like a foot to two feet. Okay. Yeah, and that 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 guy's pretty big. There's it's sea big lions party. everywhere, everywhere. There's so many of them, and they love hanging out around people. They're super curious. I'm I'm like three feet away from these sea lions. Wow. 
Um, I swam with them. I have video. Uh, I'll show you. Uh, swimming with them is super, super cool. So cool. Um, but they're everywhere. Look at the wow. color. This, all these crabs, dude, are so crazily colored, and so, especially against the black volcanic rock. Yeah, people listening, um, this crab is it has very red legs, and then the body of it is kind of like a sunset happening. It's it looks like, like a fifty nine Les Paul. It has and, a body yeah, it does. like a Les Paul. Yeah. Like a but its eyes are Les blue. Paul. Wow, man. That's I would nice. love to get a guitar kind of painted like in that of the finish. Trans Am little logo in <laughs> little there. Little screaming chicken yeah, action. Yeah, you see it in the center? <laughs> it looks like it has girl. like a viper face Something's going on its on. shell, right? Like yeah. With, yeah. Let's change pictures. The, yeah. Yeah. the wrong billionaire <laughs> will have a guitar made out of crabs. <laughs> yeah. So a non-staged picture of me and my girlfriend, fiance, uh, on the beach snuggling near seals. Sea lions. I keep saying, it's hard not to say sea lions. It's okay. That is iguana was getting a ride on the other iguanas back <laughs> as he were, they were walking across uh, but like these iguanas are totally like so the bottom one is like three feet the top one's probably 18 inches and he's riding on his back and i'm like i'm probably two feet from this thing and like they don't give a fuck and mm -hmm. Clearly, yeah, Pacific awesome. Rim got their design from the, like. With the, I'm, I'm, I'm making <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's a joke, but like this has yeah. tiny spines on the back, which it had. I mean, these. Oh look, wait, do you see? I, I threw another super dinosaur-y picture what? of a. That's a crab laying its eggs, so like oh. it's lowering its like abdomen. Mind thing, your business. And like, yeah, it's getting its <laughs> legs and eggs. Its I can't go when you watch. Yeah, no. I don't. I don't know. I was in, really into these crabs just because like I'm colorblind and these vivid colors yeah, were beautiful. like really jumping Camism. out at me. Sure. The crabs are the only thing that are scared of people. And so it was really hard to get pictures of the crabs because they, they run, run away, away if you try and get close enough. So foreground Jeez. iguana, background sea lion transiting across rocks. Um, there, You can just get so close to everything. Um, oh, zoo, uh, bottom left corner, that's a hawk flying Whoa. away with an iguana in its legs. Whoa, yes. fuck. You might be able to command plus zoom in on that one too. That that is, you can see it, um, it was tough to get. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Go down. So you see that? He's got an iguana in his feet and he's dipping out. Man, that must suck. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm just I can't trying fly. to humanize this experience. Of like, if something just came down and picked me up with its fucking feet, guy on a jetpack, guy on yeah. a jetpack just comes down and, thump, and you just and have to lay there all limp. <laughs> See, now you're now you're uh, four hundred five breakdown. Not so bad. This is it. But like, also, like, to go back to him. Like, look at the background. Like, I I don't know about you guys, but when I was thinking Galapagos, I was expecting more jungle. This yeah. is like, but aren't pretty, there are none of the uh, none of the islands are jungle? Portions of two of the islands are kind of jungle, but what is that mostly? That's mostly lava rocks. Well, yeah, it's lava, lava rock. rocks, rocks and grass, lava rocks and like shrubby kind of shit. I don't think lava rock can support like trees. Like not you know, really. Can't no. really anchor them. And them. the jungles that are there are mostly because non-endemic trees were brought in like a couple hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. Like there was some like basic colonization that happened, and like shit Makes got kind of fucked up, and they're trying to like repurify it now. So like every time we left the island on a nature walk or whatever and went back to the boat we had to have our shoes hosed off and our hands swabbed yeah. with alcohol and like all this stuff and checked for seeds and shit did you listen to the uh, radio lab galapagos from a couple years ago no is it cool great episode oh, they did a lot of really good it. audio work but they talked about you know wiping your shoes when you get off the plane yeah. and like how fastidious they are about they are the bio controls yeah. Yeah, yeah uh go that's just neat uh lava rock formations you get um, in the water. There, look at this. Whoa. This is a this is an iguana chilling in a tidal pool, and it looks so dinosaur-y Yeah, it does. with its that's spine. <laughs> that's, a, that's an old thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. These iguanas are. They live to be like ten years old too. They they they're uh, they're reasonably resilient. They are. They're little dinosaurs. Oh, that was just me jumping off the yacht. Nice. Can you jump <laughs> off the roof? roof? Not a boat. You could. Yeah. No, not the roof, but the the railing of the third floor. Uh, okay. Where my room was, third floor pretty tall. It was pretty tall. That is a a, a Nazca booby, and look, zoom in by its feet. Yeah, it's got with a, a baby. brand new baby. Did you say Nazca booby? Nazca booby. That's a Nazca booby. Why There's, are they all boobies? That's just what they're called. The, they don't look like something else. Birds. It they, means like like a silly thing. It doesn't mean like tits. <laughs> oh, so a trans silly tits. tits. Same. Yeah. Silly. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> This is on the right. Is the is the left is the father, and on the right is the is equivalent 
like a teenager Nazca booby. Looking just before. as awkward. <laughs> Super as awkward. Yeah, by the it's way, like, man. It has like an afro. Instead of having feathers, it has like well, a he's giant. going through a phase. He's trying to figure out what kind of style <laughs> he likes. He's he's confused. Confused. That's, that's bird acne. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it looks like cotton ball. He's in his fur coat it. phase. Oh, God. Like, but it's a dad, confusing time Diddy wore life. this. So, oh, cool. so the thing about Galapagos, underwater, like the, I pretty much just showed that's... you guys like every thing that we saw on land pretty much like we saw multiples of all of that shit but underwater like shit got crazy what did you shoot like that what are you even doing that fish is like it's like so vividly neon colored i don't know what that fish is called but it looks like it has the a map of the galapagos on it yeah it does <laughs> neon neon uh, fish booby it's like light blue scales and then it's covered with these brownish and vivid with vivid green outline like islands. Yeah, it's really really wild. Not just oh. a fish. Did you snorkel a lot? Yeah, every day. Snorkel There's or scuba? Way to, so, uh, snorkel. You don't actually have to scuba there. Like you can see everything crazy in the in the in the the six or six to ten feet of water. So we're on a kayak here, and we're throwing a rope, and sea lions are grabbing it and towing us around <laughs> on the kayak. Like there's like three sea lions fighting over the rope. And then towing us did, all over this the, bay. Did the naturalists say, like, try this? Yeah, yeah. They're like, they love the rope. Throw them the rope. It was so what? cool. Sea lions are the most fun. They're like dogs. That's so cool. They're That's like awesome. swimming dogs. And you're not allowed to, like, touch them. But you can but rope is okay. Rope is fine. Yeah, <laughs> and if they touch you, that's okay. But you can't touch them. It's weird. weird. Yeah, weird. Um, your, your honor, <laughs> <laughs> just underwater and fish. That one, that 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 picture doesn't actually that special. But continue. That is a baby giant tortoise. So Galapagos is one of the two places in the world where you can see giant tortoises. Mm -hmm. They live to two hundred fucking years old. So crazy. And they were fish they were eaten right there was like almost none left because people would the pirates and shit would take them and eat them and so the only other place is cleveland i think <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. no there's somewhere in the amazon i think that makes sense them, yeah um but uh so that is a baby one and that one is like probably 10 to 15 pounds and that's like a three to five year old one and that thing will get up to like 600 pounds yeah, and live so to nuts. be mm -hmm. 150 to 200 years old crazy right really amazing. so they're they're they have a breeding center for them and it takes forever <laughs> to, to breed yeah. them <laughs> it's really slow it's really slow process so they live from the time they're like zero to two years they live in like a pen the size of this room with like 30 other ones then they put them in this sort of natural looking area from when they're like three until ten and the that area is like the size of like a football field and it's like rocks and trees and they have to like kind of fend whatever learn skills and then they take them and repopulate them wow so but i have other pictures of full size they're it's crazy huge. how much naturalist stuff there is like protecting but then how also there's so much interfering too dude there's Good yeah point. they have to for these because they were just they fished them. and and, and yeah. eat, like there was like a quarter of a million of these things and they were down to like a hundred that mm -hmm. sucks yeah um, How does a turtle procreate? They oh fuck. Boy. Yeah, they does do. One get on top really of the slowly. other. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of. They, a lot of like, yeah, they, they do. We saw that. some fucking. They do just doggy style, and then they lay eggs and bury the eggs. They fuck like sting. It's very tantric. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's very slow. They, they fuck for like two hours. The, the turtle dick turtle is too. weird though. It hides in the tail. Yeah, because I had a turtle <laughs> who tried to commit suicide many times. That's how he became ours. Um, my mom <laughs> found him crossing the street back in Long Island. She was getting her nails done. Anyway, <laughs> she's like, you got to pick up this fucking turtle. So, Mr. T, we've had him for years, uh, but he did this thing. We'd like still to have him. I mean, he's in New York. Oh, I FaceTime him every now and again. <laughs> but uh, he'd be in the tank and I'd want to be like, what's up, Mr. T? And you put your hand up there and he does this thing with his hands. Like, it's like a magic trick. Help me. Yeah. So he like bangs his nails against the thing and he's like, hands are out like Superman. I'm like, this is adorable. And I had a girl over one time. We're like watching him do this thing. All of a sudden he's like full stomach and then this I'm like he's shitting that was his dick <laughs> wow <laughs> right out of the bottom of the tail total wow. surprise yeah. yeah it's very weird to watch them try so to I fuck. can't where that was going it's I awkward. can't imagine it's not know. graceful he was hitting on your girl he's like if Adam's not making a move I'm making yeah. a move like, <laughs> it's not graceful at all to watch them fuck so it's not right. graceful to watch this us is, fuck this is the only picture possible you can take of this and I want to sh just fucking shit on them a little bit. This is Lonesome George, the taxidermied body of Lonesome George, which you may have heard of. There was like three varieties of giant tortoises, and this was the last one of like 70 years after they thought this species went extinct, they found this guy. 
Okay, so he was like wandering around this island by himself for 70 years. Wow. And they brought him into captivity and tried to get him to like breed with like a similar, but he was by himself for 70 years and he was like not about fucking. He was He's like, probably all awkward. He had like an atrophied <laughs> dick. Or he, doesn't know how to, he doesn't know how to talk to people anymore. So they, he eventually died and he, then the species really went extinct and they preserved him and they built this whole room it's like a shrine to this thing, and you have to go and like acclimate before you get into the room, uh, so it doesn't like the affect the humidity, or whatever. You want them to get it cold. And you can only stand in this one place and look at. And this is the only. They say you can't use a flash, and they have him fully backlit behind a piece of glass forever. And this is the only <laughs> picture you can take of him wow. backlit and fucking terrible. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you well, guys need to learn cool from the other side. Yeah. Yeah, from the other side that you can't get to. <laughs> the uh, That's a full-size giant tortoise. It's, that is like a 150-year-old tortoise uh, that weighs like 600 pounds. Yeah, there's an adult male kneeling next to it, <laughs> and the tortoise is bigger. Yeah. Jeez. It's really, really big. Wow. Um, that's so nuts, man. That thing can travel a mile a day. It's slow, but it like just keeps moving. It's weird. Really cool. So that's that was it. like the that picture wow. is like it's sort of semi-lush, and that's the most lush that we really saw it at all. Um, wait, pull up a couple of these videos. Cool. These are underwater. Make sure sound's turned off, Tim. Yeah, these, no this sense. is uh, hammerhead sharks. This looks like hammerhead sharks. Um, we saw a bunch of hammerhead sharks, and they are the coolest things ever. It's not the best video. I'm sorry. I was excited. But being in the water surrounded by hammerhead sharks is the coolest thing. And a yeah, baby, so cool baby hammerhead shark, like 18 inches is the cutest animal you have ever seen in your life. <laughs> Hammerhead sharks are awesome, and I that's just one clip, but I, there's probably 30 of them. Uh, and are, are they just non-aggressive, not a problem? No, thing? not a problem. Not a problem. Uh, there's a spotted eagle ray. Whoa. Saw a bunch of spotted eagle rays. They are wow. very cool and graceful. Um, and they like you know they fly they jump out of the water they breach you know, yeah they, they, they really jump cool. and so the, see the shark under the, under him back it up Tim there's a shark laying on the ground right underneath him see it oh yeah <laughs> um, so you can That's see all crazy. the all the other fish too there's a lot of fish um, the water is super clear um, there's a shark wow, um, there were we saw so many sharks white tip sharks black tip sharks Galapagos sharks <laughs> here's a uh, are these birds? These fucking? are blue. Uh, these are Nazca boobies fucking. <laughs> wow. It only he, they only bang for a few seconds. The whole video is like nine seconds long. And he's uh, out. Oh. oh and then and they, look, they kiss nice. afterwards. Look, he gave her a twig. He's like, sorry. <laughs> he a twig. Sorry, so, it's okay. Like, wait, hang on. Go back to that, that video, Tim. Did you That's close it? That's a bird it? prostitute. Yeah, so the, he, he gave her the twig. Like, what would happen is the female would stand in the middle, and the male would, like, take kind of laps around the nest and bring back twigs and she'd be like Mama! and like smack him away like if she wasn't about that twig <laughs> and then other twigs she would take and put in the nest and after a while he would get to bang and, <laughs> and he paid her in twigs and he paid her in twigs wow <laughs> that's, that's really funny dude here's my favorite day is swimming uh, with a whole bunch of sea lions and I got this video because the sea lion is scratching his head with its flipper. Yeah, that's <laughs> so <laughs> cool. He's just showing off. And he was, was looking at these other guys who are just hanging around movie. and this was just in like three feet of water. Like no, no scuba tank, <laughs> snorkel and there was just so many of these sea lions all over the place being super playful and chill and hanging out. Wow, man. Yeah, they look cool. Yeah, it was the Duh. it was the best. The best. They were. So, I sat in this water for like an hour and a half. I think the last video is the most playful. This video is watch this. What this what this sea lion does. They me, have this fun, is just man. me trying to keep yeah. up Rip with this around. thing for like forty five minutes or forty five seconds. These these things are so like clumsy on land and so fast in the water. I, this this sea lion was like my best friend. We hung out for like twenty minutes. Did you name him? So cool. His name was Steve. Nice. The name Steve. their names are always Steve. This whole time I'm shooting this, I'm going, don't wow, get your fins in the so shot. Fast. Don't get your fins in the shot. Don't get your fins in the shot. <laughs> These things fucking whip, right? Yeah, man. Yeah. He's yeah, really like I got, I'm gonna put this one on Instagram when I get home. Like, that seal is out. It's like a, that That's was a crazy really moves good, direction. good. I wonder what their top speed lion. is underwater. I bet it's, you know, ten, tens of miles an hour. Yeah, sure. fast. But there were so many of them around. And then this was just, it, that. that's just so many birds. Like, 
That one, this one, you probably need sound, but I'm afraid of what's going to happen to the mix if you put sound in. But there's just giant seabirds like everywhere and pelicans. And so we're looking, we're sitting at like the mouth of a river there watching baby sharks go by. So that's wow. Galapagos. That's I recommend right. it if you're into nature. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that sounds it's awesome. A, you have to be into nature, though. If you're not into, if you're into birds, you're in fucking heaven. Two kinds of people in the world. Mm -hmm. People that don't really give a shit about birds. Yep. People who love <laughs> birds. <laughs> birds are cool. Love birds. You I know. think they're cool, but I can't go bird watching. You know? I wouldn't go if it was just birds. Right. Yeah. No, yeah. The underwater portion of it. Yeah. I would go back. I would love to go back and do a a strictly marine focused mm -hmm. trip, uh, scuba or snorkeling only. That's probably gangster because you yeah. see yeah. all the birds and shit anyway you can't they're unavoidable great point <laughs> you're not sleeping underwater you don't you don't need a special thing to see the birds yeah it's true are there things to see if you do scuba definitely yeah. definitely i didn't have i didn't you, apparently the, yeah i'm a dive yeah. master oh, okay because i want to get certified do, i love do it. i love diving it's so great i've only done sketchy like international diving where they're like oh, you're, in mexico you don't oh, need it okay i no. did it in thailand there's yeah. a shop in culver city <laughs> that you can get certified yeah out. i need to do this there's a good shop here that has very professional and, and offers i'll if you get certified and you want to do it and other people I'll, they do or they organize full-on dive trips yeah i would do that like with a hotel and a flight like a to, to mexico and in. to these other places that that are there was a lot of diving out there yeah um and it, because it's protected actually the you know the fish and everything is amazing the density the, the density of wildlife underwater in galapagos is spectacular mm -hmm. it's the exact opposite of the density of people yeah above. yeah yeah That's there's great. nothing they really need to up their merch game out there though there was nothing souvenir worthy it was all junk oh well, brought, they're trying to sell stuff but not very good. Okay. High up by where the turtles live, they, the tortoises live, they grow some coffee. I brought back a pound of Galapagos coffee, oh, which cool. I have yet to brew a cup, but cool. we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, what else is happening in the world of cars? Because I haven't driven a fucking car in two weeks. Uh, Zach, I drove the Civic Si for 20 minutes. Used for 20 minutes. 20 minutes. 20 minute car review. I want to drive the Type R. Type R is good. Yeah? Yeah. It's nice. One. It's very nice. You Not not at over sticker or any of that horse yeah, shit, but... At sticker, it's a really nice, uh, really nice street car. What You'd else? Like Has anyone quick. driven? Um, I shot the ZR1, but I, oh, didn't, did you? But I didn't drive it because I shot it, it before the launch uh, back in I think end of November or December. Oh, there's, your, there's your photo right there. Is that it? Uh, yeah. That's how's it? Uh, how's it look in person? Aggressive? It's super aggressive. <laughs> yeah, it's. It took aggressive to like. A mm -hmm. little, Did you place. get a, a go as a passenger in it or anything? No, kind of they, shit? I actually found static? out some interesting stuff. So, well, uh, and like in the advertising world and like shooting these assets, um, the cars that can't be released yet are code red. So you literally have to hire security teams when you're shooting and no uh -huh. one can see it. And they're like, they take everything really seriously. So me, it was like the last day. I'm like, we need this burnout shot or like in the tunnel or something. Um, Where's that tunnel? That's fucking cool. We shot up uh, around Seattle. Yeah, that's so, lovely. Yeah. It was like a week Great in shot. Seattle running around. Yeah. So you need a burnout? So I wanted a burnout, and they're like, oh, we can do it. No problem. But it turns out I think GM glazes the <laughs> the clutch from the factory so that you actually can't load these things up. Oh. Yeah. So like so you give happened? it a little gas. No, nothing happens. They're like, no, we can't do it. You give it a little gas and just It's just going to slip the clutch. Really? Yeah. Whoa. Oh, just so you can they just. They pull material off of it. So, so you can just actually, move it around. You can just move it around. Wow. wow. Mm. It's very. It's kind of smart because it's, so, it's such smart. an important car. It keeps I like nerded from, out on just the fact of that. I was like, this, yeah. this is awesome. So. Yeah, that's interesting. But, uh, uh, it looks it, it looks very aggressive. I'm not. I don't know if I'm a fan of the wheel design. How does the wheel, yeah. the wheels look eh, in person? I just also. Not great? Yeah, I don't like dark wheels really, but I. there's certain areas of it I wish were a little more. I also wish it wasn't offered in automatic at all. Like, <laughs> it's, that's, yeah, but they're not going to do that. Because it's, um, it's, it's, it's not the 10-speed, right? It's the 8-speed still, right? I'm not 100%. They don't get the 10-speed because it's a transaxle. It's not a transmission. 10 is too many. I hope it's not. I hope it's 8. But I'm sure it's super fast. I think I think we were shooting that right when the... What broke it just said a record. It just said a lap record. What, VIR? VIR, though. VIR. What does that mean? I don't know. Yeah. VIR is not cool enough. I mean, I think, I think they should go to the ring. You ever drive VIR? Yeah. It's a good track. That's crazy. It's a good track. Yeah. You do, it just doesn't have the provenance for you, of course. I just, just think, everyone. but I think it's, I wonder if it's avoidance of the ring time. I don't, I don't think it, that's, I is that, I is, bet, is that I, an avoidance thing? There I was, bet the ring's more expensive to rent for that. Yeah, maybe, sure. maybe, but also it's funny that people are starting to go, who gives a shit about a ring time, mm -hmm. even though a lot of people still give a shit about a ring time. So you don't give a shit until it's until it's useful to back up your particular argument. Totally, absolutely. <laughs> like right now, I'm using it against his argument. Yep. It yeah, it beat the Ford GT, right? 
Apparently, VIR, it was yeah. quicker than the four GT, which at VIR, be, at VIR, which would be which Pretty is crazy. very very impressive. Very impressive. Yeah. Four GT is, I mean, it doesn't have a, a trunk. <laughs> That's why yeah, yeah, I gotta say, like, trunk. Nuts. it's got it's I, like a it's a race car. It's a race Corvette car. has consistently delivered cars that that shit on a lot of things for way yeah. less money. Yeah, yeah, they definitely grip, do. So. And if they can build the ZR1 to not overheat, which I think it will cuz it's got the bigger blower, right? So the They did something. They brought up the overheating. I don't know the exact facts. They have, there's, they so there's some information. Sure. They well, know that heating was an issue and I think like it's well, isn't the reason that it has the big cowl hood because it has so it has the bigger blower, I right? Because so. the bigger blower wouldn't fit under the Z Z06 hood, but they were like, "Look, we got to fucking do this." So, mm -hmm. bigger blower, bigger hood. Unfortunately, not, or fortunate, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully less heat soak. Yeah, yeah probably because they obviously if they knew that was a problem, and this is the hardcore race version, he's be able yeah. to track stuff. Yeah. Like they're not gonna let it go. I thought the Z06 was the hardcore race version, but I Z06 guess not. Is nuts. It, it's it, very, very fast. I also don't know why the other part of it was like, I love, you know, RS and whatever. You know, like, I love the all-out versions for, mm -hmm. from everyone. Um, but I felt that the ZR1, like, why make the convertible version? Are they making a convertible ZR1? Yeah. <laughs> So I funny. think which I'm like just cool guys but also let this be the one where you're like guys we don't we don't need the convert cuz they'll, they'll sell it that's I bet the accountants won that one yeah, yeah. The, someone said it but the, 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 the chest, all out yeah. the all out coupe one with the arrow and the huge wing is like we shot that in it's like carbon it was sick it's a sick they're, they're angry looking the yeah. one ZL1 1 LE on the racetrack too Haven't was driven. super super yeah. sticky super fast they're nuts well they all, the they all run some crazy front tire size yeah, like three of 305 fronts yeah, like who's doing three hundred fives or 315s i don't remember i think it's 305 i think it's 305s at all four but that were. is just like that is an yeah. insane thing that's yeah. someone listening that's someone who's like oh i heard the dude who wants to put 285s on his one series like that <laughs> it's yeah. the sentiment yeah that's awesome. Yeah, it's nice when that comes from the factory. They make it where it doesn't yeah. rub and shit. It's nice. Yeah. It just sticks so Super good. Cool. But it gets there's a bit of a uh, tram liney. Oh you know? yeah. But that's what you get. It's kind of. I mean, I have. The, yeah. It comes with the territory. What are you gonna do? They're on like negative three and a quarter. Do front. you? Yeah. <laughs> a little darty. It's great, dude. It's so well. So I did that, and then I did the. Uh, I know I keep Other slowly. Seats, keep, do you have an interior? I keep slowly telling do you like you what's AC on the car. and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Full AC. Nothing's really been crazy changed on the on the engine side and like ruining everything. I All right, that's didn't good. Do a lot of that, but not ruining. It has a half good. cage in the back. Um, Does it have the backs? Oh, backs. there it is. Is that it? From Button right. Willow? Oh yeah, that's from Button Willow. Is that what it looks like now? New photos. Yeah, it looks like that. It's still a white. Still white one Graduation gift looking girl car. <laughs> <laughs> do you know? Do you know Jake uh, Stump? I do. He I also has him. a white yep. one thirty five that's kind of modded out for track yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah, I saw him. Uh, I met him recently up at a Button Willow day. I yeah, I've, every one of those I've driven, I've, I've always been like, "Fuck, these things are fast." You should drive mine. They're really They're fast. They're really fast. So I did the M three steering rack also, oh, uh, nice. and then I took the gearing from a one twenty eight i, which is a three forty six final drive. Huh. The stock is a three oh eight, so you're just oh, like, oh. which is seriously just like. Ugh. So Tons wait, why is it a three forty six? for the for the 128 is they're it? a lot slower uh, mm -hmm. and automatic i think it's oh for the auto yeah it was so for the auto so, that's yeah. why yeah so yeah, i did yeah. a 346 final drive with a wave track limited slip diff oh. uh, so what are you awesome. what are your what's your cruising rpm on the highway in sixth uh well i cruise at 80 so <laughs> yeah it's fine uh la speed uh is it over four <laughs> No way. <laughs> no. Well, oh, yeah, it might it's be. Because I was at 60 and it was at like 3,100. Oh, other wow. Day. Yeah, it's, it's high. Because I was surprised, dude, in the E46, 80 miles an hour is still like up in the mid threes. I was like, I think 80, I'm, I'm around four, but it's, yeah. I mean, well, it's fine. You're it's getting, fine. you have cooling. It's, it's only like hard on the break. trip to the track days, which is why I now need a truck and a trailer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the and trip to the track slope. day, I'm like, headphones. Do you have somewhere to keep a truck and a trailer? I have somewhere to keep a truck. The trailer, I was going to ask you after this show. <laughs> I don't have anywhere. I, actually, my my building mm -hmm. is going to be kind of tough. I, yeah. I think actually one of the things I'm not going to have room for is trucks and trailers, which is unfortunate, I think. I don't, I don't an know. alley behind we, it? There's no alleys. We're oh. using like every we're using every square inch of the of the property. So we'll see. I don't know. I fingers crossed. That looks great. Does the drive through lock up all access, or can you put a a, a rig in the drive through? 
blocks all access. This is a very nice interior. Sorry to do pictures. I like, what is this shifter thing called? So that's I mean, from AKG Motorsport. It's, uh, it's, it's like, like their the DTM shifter. style shifter. A lot of people are running the CAE. I like that shifter a lot. Yeah, I like the that. The AKG is cool because the CAE, you have to drill all new holes and worry about alignment. Uh -huh. This actually uses three kind of factory holes that sit down there, but it removes the entire stock shifter mechanism. So, oh, it does. Yeah. So is it so like, it's like left. that whole, the whole plate goes in there with yeah. the ball and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, uh, you upgrade the selector rod also, which is like a dual shear CNC piece. Oh, cool. Seriously. With nice. My, with a transmission that's in good shape. I mean, they make it for your car too. Yeah. I did that, but you also, it comes at a sacrifice because you need to upgrade your motor and trans mounts because you can't have any movement since it's chassis mounted. Uh, so like the, the free play you get from like stock bushings and like a lightly uh, upgraded shifter, that's all cool. But if you run a chassis mounted shifter and the engine moves without the, the yeah. shifter, okay. you're gonna fuck everything up. So I run like poly mounts for the engine and mm. trans. But I went, Do you get a I went lot more on vibrations the, in the car. There's more. I raised the idle to a thousand RPM, which helped. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I just love that solution. Yeah. How's the noise? Well, like, well, NVH, right NVH like Dude, that, that is really no, it's that, that vibration. It, yeah. It's just a funny. You'd be so surprised it. the difference between 750 mm -hmm. and a thousand. It does. I did. Um, and uh, my Focus RS, I mm -hmm. raised it by 50 RPM. Yeah. I raised it from 850 to 900, and it actually it made so a nice. shocking difference. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So it did that, but I there was there was options, and I like took. The more chill route <laughs> when when possible. So with yeah. the motor mounts, you could do like 75D, which is mm -hmm. literally it's a fucking bowling ball. So you don't want to do that. <laughs> so I did like 95A, which I learned is like what is that? a little what bit is, softer. Do you know what the durometer? durometer? Yeah, what that means that's the so like, durometer. Yeah, it's the density of the poly. Okay, but then there's but there's D and A, which I. Uh, well, I don't know what that I don't is. know. They have a lot but of 95, options. 95A is softer of the two. Okay, and then the transmission mounts. <clears throat> Instead of running full poly, I did, they're like an aluminum cup from AKG with actually mm -hmm. a factory right. BMW E21 trans mount. Oh. So you just have to like make the hole a little bigger down there, but uh, that's a, kind of the compromise. So it's nice. not unbearable. <laughs> but the rear end is completely solid. Fortunately, you have a TSX. <laughs> the rear end's what? Completely um, stock? Completely solid. Oh, yeah. solid. So it's, all, it's all like the PowerFlix track bushings. I dropped the rear subframe in that thing like twice already, but <laughs> I've gotten really good at everything now that I've Man, ordered no all this shit. You do all this shit yourself? Yeah. Wow. So I, we sometimes work down at Hootigan, uh, and then my buddies at EAS in Anaheim. Oh, yeah. I've known them since like I worked at European Car, and we built the E46 M3 together. Um, but yeah, now Steve over there <laughs> just hates hearing me from me, but he's like, all right, no one's in that bay today. Come on down. Nice. But it's good. I mean, it's, it taught me a lot because I know I can go down there. And if I do get in a little over my head, I'm like, Steve. Yeah. And they have like air tools and shit. Yeah. yeah. Everything's cool. I that, mean, I've started to assemble my own kit, but it's, it's. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be able to do it without having access to a lift for sure. Yeah. But now lift I've, makes your I've life. replaced my brakes like a thousand times. I got so good at that. I'm like, I'm ready to roll. Yeah. If you have access to a lift, brakes are no big deal yeah. at all. I mean. I don't know. Everything about working on a car that, to me, that's fucked up is it comes from laying on the ground. Yeah. No, laying much. on the ground. But you also, you don't realize when you grow up laying on the ground <laughs> how hard it is to get used to working on a lift. Oh, uh, really? Well, for me, it was like, because we all like yeah, built dumb, like big turbo GTIs in our driveways. Um, and that was it. And always having everything from your back. But getting to a lift and having to learn leverage and position and that's all that point. shit you're like I'm gonna fuck this up I wanna go lay down like this <laughs> yeah you can't know. brace off the ground it's way and, different yeah that's a good but point that's what the air tools are for that's we, we, when they can fit they yeah. can't always fit yeah. that's true. they've gotten they're pretty small air nowadays, tools will come by you need to learn patience with those two because I think once you get the air tools for your first time too you're like yeah fucking zip it on everything's NASCAR <laughs> <laughs> right after you cross right your fucking head exactly yeah, yeah. Oh, that'd be yeah. so bad um, that spec E46 we drove had the same style of shifter mm. and I, I feel like my taste in shifters has evolved when, when I was younger I was like no no your hand has to go down on the shifter on the top yeah. you know and like and then driving that car it's like the same shape as the steering wheel basically so your hand doesn't have to rotate 90 degrees when you're like racing mm -hmm. which is a small minute point but I think it does help you can see I I have a I, my YouTube channel is like literally non-existent of anything, but I only put like some in-car footage up there. Um, but I just watched the difference between me and my E90 at Laguna Seca versus me and the 135 at Button Willow, and it's like just the shift times of me being low, hands here, shifter right there is like that third to fourth shift. Yeah. all of them are just so immediate, and you're right there. Like I like when you're sketchy when you're, turns. When you know, you need to like downshift your quickly. Steering wheel are less than that. Yeah, right. Like Ooh, that would be, that'd be cool. Yeah, like real tall. But I can you yeah. can get it pretty close. My Mustang is is there. It's pretty that, close. That, that's the benefit, of course, yeah. of like close. handbrake up here. You know, reaching down, it's such a different mechanic. For sure. Yeah, just just there. quick access to stuff. But yeah, yeah, yeah those those quick changes, so 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 fun. 
I'm that's, trying to go. I'm trying car. to go Laguna this summer. Yeah. I have yet to. Yeah. I've only ever run there in like press days. Press like yeah. not fucking. My real first cars. time there was in the CTSV wagon. Nice, <laughs> which is literally the most well, un-Laguna car. That's fucking awesome. Corkscrew in that was like it's probably was hairy. So fun. But um, but yeah, that was rad. And then finally going, we went out with uh, Speed Ventures last year for Beamer Challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, and we wanted to tow our cars. We we put Vinny Z46 M3 and my 335 on like a lifted Jeep trailer, basically <laughs> from a from a shop up in the valley. This thing is just like a fixed like 45 degree ramp. Uh, the whole beginning of that video is just us fucking smashing into everything and like piling up wood. But it was cool because we wanted the story of like we trailered our cars up there. This is like a bucket list kind of track. Mm-hmm. But driving that track on, on your own terms, like in your own car, that you yeah. Go, so uh, man, yeah. I've never, I on your that own. Track. That's a good uh, good phrasing of it. On your own terms. Yeah, I'm it's just not, different. I mean, press trips. You like it's it's not the it's same. Not really. Yeah. Not the same. It's, it's like awesome. Sp- I'm not sure complaining. Like speed no, no, I, I actually no. miss them more than like anything. <laughs> if I could go back, I would have just done more press trips as a journalist. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, if you treat once you them, stop doing it, I'm you, saying you, you know, them. yeah, life is good. Photography's cool. It's not like I'm not going to you know Spain to drive the F type. Yeah. Um. But yeah, those are the good times. It's fun. It's just got, it takes for me. It's just they take so much time. It's just, yeah. There's a travel day at both ends and. Man, I guess not doing it now, I'd probably be like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I guess it depends on who's invited. I'd much too. rather just drop the car off my house. Yeah. Leave me alone. I'll see you in a week. Mm-hmm. Have fun. Because well, we have such good roads here, we can just go driving. You yeah. know, if, if you live in Minneapolis, like you want to go on a press trip because the roads yeah. might suck. Yeah, but if you live in Minneapolis and want to write about cars, you should have fucking moved. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, you know, like Florida, like go a lot of cars, to, but nothing go like to where drive. your just industry is. Yeah, it's true. You know, you go, you got to go to it. You can't fucking just be like, well, I could do it from here. No, nope, you can't. <laughs> I'm going to be an actor in Bozeman, Montana. <laughs> yeah, right? You're the best actor. Right? <laughs> That's true. Um, shit. What's up with that 959? I keep staring on your Instagram. So What's that about? I shot that for the third cover of uh, Triple Zero. Oh, uh, Triple Zero. Yeah. Um, so that 959 uh, is incredible. Yeah. Is that? It's a 959S. Which is Sport. Sport and less of and more expensive, yeah. for as opposed to K, right? The uh, comfort I think it was one? just 959 and 959S. Didn't they have comfort? Oh, it was comfort, yeah, comfort, yeah. but I think as well, it's just, right? I don't know if it was that different was it, or was it was like Kanepa's or something. Uh, it was Seinfeld's. Oh, yeah, lovely. Yeah. Where did you go to New York to do it? Or no, it, here? it was out here. Um, that was a stressful day because I didn't want to just like run and gun it, like, oh, we'll just <laughs> go drive around LA, yeah. So no. I kind of took a little bit of what I've done on the commercial end and I like hired a location scout and I found a few things that I wanted and we filled out all the necessary permits so we weren't kicked out of places even though I ended that's, up getting kicked out of there. That's a nice shot. $500 mm-hmm. shot. I, was, no. I had I had like 30 minutes basically and the guy's like, give me 500 bucks now or you're fucking out of here because <laughs> we had made plans the day before where it was like this bro agreement. I'm like, hey man, editorial. Yeah. You know, I'll be like out of your hair, put me and in the you back. you show up with a 959 and they're like, and he's like, yeah, I'm on the phone with whoever. He's like, yeah, I said it's 1500 bucks. You can shoot here till nine. I was like, dude, from who? I don't even have, I'm not, I don't have that on me. And I brought 500 bucks with me in cash in case I ran into trouble. Really? Yeah, Good just because just like shooting in Long Ooh. Beach is, is sketchy. Yeah. Okay. Noted. But, but yeah, that was fun. Who, they wanted uh, to play on the, you know, the containers because those cars were like locked away in the containers in the ports. Um, yeah. So. That's like, it, it's such a cool car, those things. Yeah. I fucking love 959s. Did you get to have a go in it? No. Not drive, but no. as a passenger. Passenger, yes. They're fast, huh? Super cool. Yeah. Weirdly fast. Weirdly so fast. So laggy. Just <laughs> like, it's cool. Yeah. Very 911-like, but kind of not. Yeah. Like, and really not not a good looking car. <laughs> as a photographer, you're like, it's what's the angle? Gone. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I did that front on shot for the cover, and I, I kept going back to the rear of it because it's so like... It's just so weird. But the whole yeah. car to me looks like it was like if you've ever put a really like wide lens on your camera. Yeah. Like the car looks like it was built like with distortion. <laughs> like it was built with someone wearing like some crazy like 16 mil glasses. Because like it's really warped and long in places that don't yeah, make sense. Yeah, it's true. And the headlights look like they melted or yeah. something. But, it's uh, like but it, it is. But it's beautiful and it's cool. It's just, sort of like a failed concept where it's like, well, glad they didn't happened. make that. And it's so, <laughs> I mean, dude, the engineering in there, just yeah. like the adjustable diff, everything in it. So cool. But the fact that it came out the same time as the F40, and the F40 looks the way it does. The F40 is hot. You guys were smoking different shit that day. (laughs) 
I just finished uh, one of the, th- you know, there's no cell service or Wi-Fi at all in the Galapagos. And so uh, I read three Brook books, which is not something I've done in a week since college. And one of which was Brock Yates's 500 page Enzo Ferrari biography, Whoa. which is like you're really <laughs> kicking back a fucking slog to get through that. Yeah. I had a lot of free it's time. Sea tortoise of books. A lot of free. T- <laughs> well, you had, you had 10 miles an hour on that ship. We're transiting quite a bit. And uh, that was a pair, you know. He didn't, Enzo Ferrari, as as I learned in the book, post Daytona, you know, the 74 Daytona, Ferrari Daytona, post that, Fiat took over 100% of the road car business. And Enzo Ferrari was like, couldn't give a fuck, I'll be over here in F1, if you need me, bye. Wow. And so, in period... You know the the three oh eights and all you know all that shit was all like nah like he thumbed his nose down he had fucking disdain for the people who bought them he didn't give a shit until the F they got the F forty going and that and he got very excited about that and then he fucking died yeah wow so, <laughs> so then he showed up simplified I simplified the second half of his life there yes. quite a bit but he was a dick bag and so Ferrari was a real dick bag. There's not a lot of nice things about him hmm, in right. general. He's, he's a man with conviction. He's and just a guy who they they called him like uh, an agitator of men. You know, we actually were reading. I was laughing. It sounded like a lot like Ralph Lauren. It's like, well, you can't sew, but you know the best tailor, and you can't draw, but you know the best designer. You know where to get the best fabrics. Hmm. You know to do this. It's like you don't do this shit, but you like you put it all together, and that makes it yours. And that's sort of Enzo Ferrari. Hmm. Like he never had a single. Innovation, <laughs> ever, nothing. He never he was did. The producer. It. He never did yeah. anything new. Their Formula One cars, their their engines, whatever. They never had a single new bit of technology ever. Hmm. They just won races by showing up at all of them. Like, and if the competition was weak, they'd win. If the competition was strong, they'd lose. But like, wow. by showing up time after time, they you know win. And by people loving the brand so much that they had a lot of control in how shit worked. Are they but, still at that like when's the last time Ferrari won an F1 championship? Long Schumacher. Uh no, didn't Kimi Raikkonen win driving a Ferrari after that. Schumacher? I mean, I asked either you cuz I don't know. Either, <laughs> we phone a friend. It was either Schumacher or Raikkonen in a Ferrari, I think. Raikkonen won in 07 driver or constructors. Well, he was asking the last either time one. Ferrari won, which I think was Raikkonen in 07. But if I'm not wrong, I wouldn't be at all surprised. Their last constructor was in 08. And was it Raikkonen? It must have been. Whatever. Yeah, I think it's both. But that he Enzo Ferrari died in 88. So do they still have the clout now? Now they've now that there's no more Enzo Ferrari, they have embraced the road cars. You know, Raikkonen won in 07. Okay. Um, constructor in 08. Um, yeah, so they show up and like kind of like you said, you know, because nowadays you've got like the Red Bull team and Mercedes and all. Yeah. You know, Mercedes is like, hey, we separate our turbos and they're better. Yeah. And it's like, I was like, ah, fuck, yeah. that was that was that two years or whatever it was. Yeah, no, it happens that they're the road cars are very nice to drive. As oh, you, fair. you well know and I well know and we. There, there was that time we drove the California T. Ugh. <laughs> I like the California T actually. <laughs> that motor is awesome. I'm kind of stoked for that Portofino thing. The new, the new California that is coming. I haven't coming. seen it. Yeah, the uh, give us the Ferrari Portofino. I just want uh, FF tip. prices to just plummet. Yeah, well, the the new that new Lusso looks good. The new um, one's supposed to be better. Here, look at this. So they they have updated the. Uh, oh yeah, the Fr- California oh, T. It looks. I think I like what they've done here. Yeah, it's no, aggressive. It looks good. Yeah, a little bit of like an F F type clamshell on the side. Yeah, they have a much it's, more consistent look. I think across all the models nowadays, and it's it's good. Like it looks like a, like F twelve. It looks uh-huh. very very good nice. Cars. Ooh, the F twelve. So good. F twelve is the shit. Yeah, Harris knows what's up with that. Haven't driven yeah. one. He's figured that. He's, he's figured that. Figured game out how to out. drift all of them. You see his fucking GT three. He got. I'm jealous. Mm-hmm. He the, got a GT three uh, toy with a stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. badass. I'm thinking about. I, I think I emailed back Lotus. Lotus offered me an Avora 400 what? for a month. Yes, but I was like, I don't. I didn't know what to do with it. Can we go racing? I just had some ideas. Yeah, super lap battle. Like, let's just bring it. Yeah. Is can I run without a cage in that? Yeah. Is there a streetcar section? I ran without a cage there. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, we'll run that. Super yeah. lap battle. Stock. Do it. <laughs> it's only when you get fixed back seats, and then you need a harness bar. Oh, uh, okay, cool. That makes sense. Which is why I had to do it. No, my idea for them was like, let me just drive it at every single racetrack in Cal- <laughs> all the racetracks in California. Yeah. The tour. Yeah, the tour to Cali. I haven't driven one of those either. They're very, very good. All right. Well, when yeah. you get it. When I get if I if it comes through, we can do it. 
There was a delay of game, though, because they sent me the email, and then I went on vacation. I hope it happened. I still really want to buy an Xyz also. <sighs> Glutton for punishment. One yeah. of them cars. They beat you up. The Avora is comfy. It's nice. Mm. It's nice. You're, you're clearly okay with the punishment. You know? I'm yeah, done, yeah, I'm done full with comfy. aluminum think, bushings. Well, that's why I'm like or, or, or. finding comfy somewhere else now. And eventually I'll have a fast street car again. I don't think that, I don't, I've never really liked those exiges on, on track all that much. Maybe it's because I'm so big. Yeah. But like, it's just, they've never been my favorite as far as uh, what to drive on a racetrack. But that's just me. That's just me. What else we got? Anything? Um, we got, well, on Facebook? answered one question. We have one other question, which what's is a uh, dumb question and way late, but what's a reasonably priced Canon lens for car photography? Oh, so, reasonably priced Canon lens. Um, you know, there's the, the 24 to 105 L series glass is like mm-hmm. the staple. Like it comes with like the nicer kits, like the 5D Mark three Mark, yeah. Mark four. Um, everyone need you should have one of those. Everyone. That's just like, if you can only have one lens to do stuff with 24 millimeters on a full frame camera or not, uh, it's pretty good. You can get those. Like I would just buy used stuff. Honestly, mm-hmm. Craigslist is your friend. Craigslist. There's like Facebook groups. Um, so yeah, I would do like between 16 and 35, just get zoom lenses so you have some focal length to play with. Mm. But the Canon 16 to 35, 24 to 105, 24 to 70. If you can afford it, the 70 to 200 it. is my jam. Yeah. That's that's my favorite That's an Canon awesome lens. lens, it's a big lens. It's big, but, but incredibly sharp. Um, if you could only have two lenses, I feel like that's it. Like you oh, just, 24 to 105 would and do, a 70 to 200? I would do 24 to 70 and 70 to 200. Oh, 24 yeah. to 70 is a 28 aperture, sharper lens. Oh, is it? Nicer. I haven't seen that one. Um, but yeah, if you could only have two lenses, you'd be fine forever. Yeah. Yeah. The three quarter shot front three quarter shot is perfect with a 70 to 200. It's nice. At what focal length? At what focal length? Uh, hmm. I don't know. I, I think probably it's closer to 70, but I just really like how little that lens distorts. Yeah. No, uh, it's the a, they're beautiful lenses, whether it's yeah. like portrait stuff or yeah. details. I mean, I was just on this big job, uh, and I have to use a bigger medium format camera for most of the stuff. Are you with a digital back? Yeah. <sighs> what, you're using Hasselblad or something? No, I have a phase one. Um, Do you? 60 megapixel. Sick. It's awesome. That's uh, so But awesome. super bulky and cumbersome and like not like, I'll oh, go shoot a track day with this <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. Literally with the lens I had on there, uh, it's got to be over 15 pounds. But... I also have a Sony A7R2, which I just sold my Canon and started playing around with that. But I use that with the 70 to 200 and an adapter. Yeah. Uh, and got done like all the detail stuff. Yeah. So easy. The adapter's good in California. Be careful in the rain with that motherfucker, though. I honestly, the it was a little slow to autofocus, too. Uh, you need a lot of light. So I think I'm going to ditch the 70 to 200. Whoever asked that, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it to you for a good deal. Uh, and then I'll run the regular like Sony glass on it. Yeah, the Sonys are good. Are are nice now. It's cool. Feels like yeah. a toy. But it does. The, mm-hmm. So but like, the, the files are incredible. But yeah. I actually hate. I hate the camera. I'm gonna try the Mark III. I bought it used. Five D like, Mark III. No, the A7 oh, A7 R3. R3. Oh, Why do you hate it? Uh, I mean, well, coming from something like a Canon as your like shoot around camera, tons of grip, really nice weight. The menus are like not. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah. There's buttons for everything. Yeah, and the so and it, it feels like a real camera. Uh, the Sony without the extended battery grip is like it feels, feels super like plastic. Shoot, yeah. You're like cool. Got this for Christmas. Um, <laughs> it's like, but, it's but, a crazy but then it also it's like 42 megapixel. Like you can shoot at ISO 6000 with no noise. There. Dude, we shot at ISO 100,000, I think, at one point. Yeah, It was crazy. I mean, you can, like, do night vision with them if you need to. But as far as, like, a degraded quality image, um, just the limits you can push everything to, that's why they became so popular. Yeah. Because a lot of people were like, I could shoot natural light, bump the shadows in Photoshop, kind of makes things look weird. I mean, we bought one for that. You know, it helped a lot. Oh, is that what they do? They fucking... There's kind of... If you notice, like, in a lot of photography, yeah, some of this, it's like... It's like the HDR thing, I think, became a thing with clarity and like glowing edges. Yeah. But now you'll see a lot and you can spot like you can you can spot a processed Sony image like mile away now because I think it's sometimes it's like a look. Other times it's like a little bit of laziness. But if you're not shooting in optimal lighting and you bump your shadows, you end up with this weird kind of pastel-y feeling like oh. there are no real black parts of this photo, <laughs> yeah. but there aren't. Not I'm um, now. I'm now. I'm gonna only be able to see. So you'll that. see like stuff push that you can see with natural light. Was just like the shadows are just all this information is there, <laughs> um, which is cool. But it you got to find a balance. I think. Yeah, yeah. So that makes sense. Cool, man. What do you want to plug before we get out of here? You want to plug anything? I got nothing. I mean, just your Instagram. Find me on Instagram. Burn uh, you and everyone who has helped me out with my car. It's been pretty incredible. Stop Tech, Beamer World, Berg Technology. 
I like KW. Stop, Tech. Stop Tech's good. KW's I a, good. I did a front and rear uh, trophy kit. Oh, it's the best, so right? Yeah. It's the best. It's awesome. Do and you know, changing your brake pads in like 10 minutes. All you don't have corners. to fuck Whoa. with like your master cylinder or any of that no, shit, No, because right? all the Stop Tech kit... All the stop tech kits are built uh, off the bias of the factory system. Perfect. Nice. So, because right. I had a stop tech kit on the E90 right before I sold it, and I was under the impression I could just. By the way, yeah. So the whole thing was like, I'm going to pull all these parts off the E90. You thought they would just go on. I got super <laughs> lazy. I pulled the brakes off. I put them on the one series. The front fit. The rear didn't. Then I emailed them. They're like, Alex, no one told you that fits. The, the piston sizing is way different. You need new carriers. I was like, fuck. Sold the E90 with almost all the parts on it. Hit up all new people and like worked with oh, a bunch of awesome no. brands. VRSF, Motive, everyone. Um, so yeah, that car's been cool. Cool. I should have. A, we should have a go. Next time you want to go, there's a thing happening. Next time, maybe I can bring the Lotus. Bite me. Maybe I can bring the Lotus. All right, I'm down. Yeah. I want to see what your brake feels like because I do not like my brake feel. Don't try it right now because I still have the track pads in. And <laughs> okay, it's like well, it's a little yeah, right it's now. Nuts. They're so loud. Oh, it's just, so loud on the street right now that I actually want to like pull the handbrake up a little bit to slow myself. Can down. you? Uh, can you like? Ho- if you hose out the dust, does that cut it? No, that- they're they're okay. I still have dust boots in there. I have my street pads at home. I've just been really, yeah. I've been swamped since uh, the last track day. And I just leave them. Mm-hmm. The uh, the Alpha Julia I had oh. as a press car. It's, why, it's fun. Why does everyone drive. hate those? I was on the press trip for that, and clearly, no why check everyone, engine I lights. I don't hate it. I just I just things. I happens. see a lot of bad press about just well, things the happen. Yeah. <laughs> It people did, people don't did, dislike it bums the me car. Out. It did some yeah, weird shit. The car's shit. awesome, but it bums me out yeah. that, that it has. It did weird shit, shit while I had it. What do you want me to tell yeah. you? Like no, I, I saw the same thing I told to, to Scott Brown. Yeah. <laughs> Scott Brown was like, "Well," and I was like, "Ah, what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. Can't, I'm not making this shit up. Yeah. It happens." But you but know, when it works, it was lovely to I drive. Like that car. But the brakes were like, Err! it was a very They're right nuts. now. The we were brake there. by we wire the from there, but uh, they have just no fade. They're just <laughs> the brake by wire. They have no fade, but if you're st- stuck in a traffic jam, I asked about fucking that. Pepsi's going through the Does windshield. Does it feel at all like a Ferrari? The braking? No, no. Because I asked him, he's like, "Oh, a Ferrari, we do this too." <laughs> Not <laughs> exactly. Like, know, you don't do it exactly the same. So hard it's to predict. PR. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the NSX has the very good brake by water. I've driven. Yeah, uh, I have so many things I need to drive. And you, uh, you have to drive the NSX. Yeah. NSX is excellent. I miss it's it. Out. Very, very fast. Very nice. Thanks for uh, coming down, Thanks homie. Thanks for having me, man. I want to go outside and take a look at your car now. Let's do it. it. Sounds fun. And uh, we go for a drive soon, yes? Uh, before we get out of here, those of you who want to see one takes not go away, Zach Clapman taking over, coming in at you. Email if you want Zach to drive your car. The disclaimer is yes. I probably won't be there. <laughs> like, right. like yep. don't like if you want Zach. I want Zach to drive your car. He's a very good driver. He's very responsible. He has ex- experience. And uh, if you want Zach to drive your car, uh, email the smoking tire at gmail dot com. Put Zach and uh, your car in the subject line, and uh, he will be scheduling over the second half of March mm-hmm. and onward. Hopefully, uh, a bunch of uh, one takes, which will be fucking awesome. I'm excited for that. I'm excited to see Zach do if, it. If you don't put Zach. my name in it, it's going to get lost it might get in our lost email, email account, email. for real. Yeah. So you have to do that. We may have to figure out a better long-term solution. You can repost, post a different video, but for now, yeah. that's that's what we're doing. Yeah, that's the plan. Anyway, uh, thanks for coming down, Alex. Good chilling, homie. Thanks, man. And uh, send your cars to Zach if you want him to drive them. I think it will be very fun. And the Smoke Tire Podcast is powered by Shout Engine. Get your own damn podcast at shoutengine.com. And if you like podcasts, listen to my other one. It's about watches. It's called Watch and Listen with Cameron Weiss. And it's available all the places you get your podcasts. Just search for it and on YouTube, just like this one. All those things. See you next week. Good day.